What's up and welcome to another live unboxing review with Gizmo Slip Tech. But today we're taking a look at the Asus Strix Scar 16. This was my number one rated laptop at the beginning of the year. And I think it's gonna be freaking awesome. I have had some hands-on time with it. I did just pair it up against the Zephyrus Duo 16, one of the other top gaming laptops that features the Ryzen 9 7945HX. And I, I did a bunch of CPU comparison benchmarks with this SCAR 16 yesterday. So check my live stream feed if you want to check that out. And uh, be sure to Give us, give it a, give this live stream a like if you're up for this content, you like this kind of content, and if you want to see more of this kind of content, and do consider subscribing if you want to see detailed laptop live stream videos. Because if you subscribe and go for notifications, then you can come in to the live stream and ask questions and all of that while we're doing this live. So, without further ado, let's dive into this laptop. We're going to talk about the specs. We're going to talk about. Uh, what's inside. We're going to take the bottom of this chassis off and we're going to see what the actual internals look like, the internal cooling solution. We're going to do a display test. We're going to do a ton of benchmarks. We're going to try uh, a bunch of different things. We're going to undervolt this thing. We're going to overclock this guy. We got a whole bunch planned for today. Hopefully everything goes well today. What's up, Zidi? Welcome to the stream. I see a bunch of people hopping onto the live stream. That's all excellent. I can't wait. Uh, like I said, this was my number one rated laptop for the year. At the beginning of my initial top 10 uh, laptops to look at, this was my top most interesting laptop to me mainly. Uh, I mean, there's a few different reasons, but let's dive into it. I've got uh, a spec sheet here. Let me pull up the spec sheet for this laptop. I think the, uh, the biggest thing about this laptop that really sets it apart is... Let me just make sure, yeah, we're good. All right, so here's the SCAR 16. It is the price of $36.99, not $35.99. Uh, we've got an i9-13980HX in this guy, DDR5 4800 RAM with 32 gig in dual channel. Uh, we got RTX 4090 with 150 watt base, 25 watt boost. So uh, even if you're in a CPU heavy game, you should get, be able to get up to at least 150 watts no matter what. Uh, QHD plus 16 inch 240 hertz 1100 nit mini led display that should be absolutely gorgeous now we have not done any display testing on it but the display is awesome in my opinion we've got g-sync advanced optimus looks like i put the ram on here twice which is a little bit of a mistake uh we do have two terabytes of ssd space on this guy but i'm not sure if it's in raid zero or if it's one two terabyte drive we're going to check that out the ports on this are one HDMI 2.1. We got a Thunderbolt 4, a USB-C. Both of these have DisplayPort 1.4 support and power delivery support. Two more USB-A's on the right, an Ethernet and a headset port. Uh, no SD card slot here, and it's a little sad. There's not five USBs. There's the ports on this guy are not that amazing, right? 90 watt hour battery, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and a 720p webcam. All right, so. Those are the those are the quick quick and dirty spec overview of the Scar 16. I think it's a tremendous set of specs versus most of the competition out there. That said, it's not necessarily the best bang for the buck laptop you can buy. You are getting some premium features such as RGB lighting and the really high end display, as well as liquid metal conducting on on the CPU and the GPU. So, uh, dang, this thing is going to be awesome. I can't wait to dive into it. So. Without further ado, let's just get, go ahead and get right into the unboxing. Um, no, yeah, no, let's quit. No, first, let's quickly compare. Let's quickly compare this guy against the other top 16 inch laptops that you can potentially buy. Uh, Cause I think that's gonna be a more interesting thing to have right at the beginning here. All right, so this is my laptop ranked list and it's a very extensive list that has basically every single RTX 4000 series laptop that you can buy. There's 148 laptops on this list now, and there are quite a few RTX 3000 laptop deals here at the top. So if you're looking for a top deal, you don't have $3,000 to spend. Let's say you only have $1,000 to spend or maybe $1,500 to spend. Uh, you're gonna be able to find some really great deals both on RTX 4000 series laptops that I can recommend as well as RTX 3000 series laptops right here at the top, okay? Now, in terms of, uh, highly competitive laptops. The first thing we're gonna do, all right, we're gonna sort by display quality, because that's probably the number one reason someone's gonna wanna get the SCAR 16. 
The display quality on this is absolutely nuts. Um, so if we, if we sort by display quality, we can basically see all of these laptops right here that feature 100% uh, display rating. These basically all have mini LED displays and they're 16 by 10 aspect ratios. So uh, we've got the Flow X16. This is gonna be a more portable version of the laptop. I can go and click this and expand this and I can get all kinds of data here about the laptop. And you can scroll through pictures on this list. Uh, if I go ahead and flip to the next one, we got the Zephyrus M16. Well, real quick, real quick, the Flow X16, Super portable laptop, and it hooks up to an XG Mobile eGPU for additional performance. But the onboard hardware is not going to be nearly as powerful as this guy, though. All right, now this has not been released for sale as far as I know yet, but it's going to be awesome. If you're looking for like an Ultrabook type of experience that's got a touch screen, folds backwards, can be used as a tablet, this is the way to go. Zephyrus M16 is like more of a thinner, lighter version of the SCAR, and it's got Windows Hello. The SCAR does not have Windows Hello. And uh, this thing does not have as high of power limits and it doesn't have an HX processor. So there's a lot more multi-core performance in the SCAR 16, but it's the same display, same mini LED display. So here's the SCAR 16 and you can get an RTX 4080 version of this for $28.99 as well. Um, this, is, we, this is the one we're gonna be reviewing today. Um, it's an RTX 4090 with an i9 13980HX. We already went over all these specs. Here's the 4080 version. The only difference here is a one terabyte SSD and then you get an RTX 4080 instead. And it, it is quite a bit cheaper at $2899. So that's gonna be seven, $800 cheaper, right? $800 cheaper, that's pretty significant. Um, the, the one terabyte to two terabyte SSD upgrade might be worth like 100, maybe $200 at most. Uh, so really you're paying like seven, $800, like probably $700 basically for the RTX 4080 to 4090 upgrade. And I don't think you're gonna get a huge percentage improvement, probably more like 12, 15% uh, performance gain going between these two. So if you're after a better bang for the buck, the 4080 version of this machine is probably the better way to go. Now the Zephyrus Duo 16, this guy is uh, very competitive with the SCAR 16, but it's got a two, uh, dual display system. And this is a touch display that also has stylus support. So if you need something to draw on, this is gonna be awesome. If you want dual screens for like, uh, you know, programming or spreadsheets or video editing or Photoshop design, whatever you wanna do, this thing's got some awesome stuff. I did an unboxing of this laptop two days ago, and then I also did a comparison with this Ryzen CPU yesterday. So be sure to check out my live stream history if you wanna check out this video right here. So the unboxing. Um, so the MSI Stealth 15 has, I don't know why it's here. It shouldn't have a 100% display quality. What is this doing here? This looks, I don't think, yeah, this should not be up here. That's a that's an error. Now this one probably should be. I believe this one's super bright and vibrant display. Uh, I don't think it's a mini LED though, is it? I don't think so. Either way, I don't really recommend the Stealth 17 Studio. Anyway, it's very, very high price for minimal performance. Um, I would definitely go with like the Zephyrus M16 or the Blade 16 instead if you're looking for something a little more portable. Now the Blade 16 is a, definitely a strong competitor to the SCAR 16. Um, the biggest thing here is that you have a 4K 120 hertz or full HD 240 hertz, thousand nits mini LED display. So basically what you're looking at is uh, a trade-off. Higher resolution, maybe if you're like a video editor, graphic designer, and you wanna see, uh, if you want to see the differences between, um, I don't know, like fine details in your images or video work, having a higher resolution display might be the, the main application here, going to this 4K 120 hertz version. Uh, that said, for most gaming, I think the QHD version, to QHD plus 240 hertz is gonna be much better in the SCAR because you get the full, uh, better resolution, which I don't think most people's eyes are gonna be able to tell a difference between the 4K and QHD 240 hertz except maybe when you're looking at text kind of up close. Um, so in general, I do think that the SCAR 16 has a better all around display for most gamers, with the exception of maybe some design people might prefer or video editing people might prefer the 4K 120 Hertz. Now the big advantage I think for the Blade 16 is this DDR5 5600 uh, RAM, which is probably gonna give it a slight edge in CPU bound gaming performance. Although the CPU itself doesn't go to quite as high a power limit as the SCAR 16. And we have tested this. I did do an unboxing of the Blade 16. 
Uh, so if you want to check that out, this should be on the sheet here as well. Um, right here, Blade 16, I do an overview of it. Here's the unboxing, I do some testing of it. And then here's also hands-on when I was with the Blade 16 at CES. Uh, and they do have a 4080 version of this laptop, uh, and it's a QHD Plus 240Hz 500 nits display. Uh, and this is definitely a lot better bang for the buck at $35.99 compared to the more expensive Blade 16. For the money, I feel like the Scar 16 is a better bang for the buck, but the build quality and a few other things on the Blade 16, like the speaker quality, may be worth the upgrade. It's up to you. Um, Overall, when you compare the 4080 version being almost the same price as the SCAR 16 at $36.99, I definitely would lean more towards the SCAR 16 for my recommendation. That said, you also have Windows Hello on the Blade series. You don't have that on the SCAR 16. So there's three key differences right there. You got the RAM, you got the uh, display difference between the, you know, especially if you get the 4090 version with the 4K mini LED. So there's a lot of differences there. Uh, the, other, the other laptops that have a mini LED would be the, the Acer Predator Helios 18 with the i9-13900HX and RTX 4080. Now, it doesn't go up to 4090, and we, this is not currently available inside of the United States, to the best of my knowledge. There are some European places that are selling it, and uh, I believe in some of the Asian markets they're selling it, like India and uh, a, couple other of the a couple other markets. I don't know exactly where it's being sold or not being sold yet, but it's not being sold in the United States which is a big sad panda for me because I really want to review this guy. Um, the, the Acer Predator Helio 16 is a smaller version, has the same power limits and everything, but uh, basically, if you get the mini LED version, this is the only 18-inch laptop that has a mini LED, though the GT77 also has a mini LED display. That's a 4K 144Hz, uh, but it has a slower response time, which makes it so it's harder for me to recommend it, and I did hurt the display rating um, for that reason. Now... Yeah, so that's, those are all the displays that can go up to about a thousand nits that are competitive with the SCAR 16. Let me pop over to chat and check in with you guys before we get the unboxing continuing. Um, let's see here, all right. So, Gizmo and chat, okay, boom, 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 boom. Do do. Uh, I do like my Blade 18, Mitchell. Yeah, I do enjoy my Blade 18. It, I feel like the, the increased price of the Blade 18 was worth it compared to like the Scar 18 uh, because the display is a little bit brighter. The unibody aluminum chassis is more rigid. Um, and the speakers on the Blade 18 are definitely better. The webcam is way better uh, than the Scar 18. And Windows Hello, I love Windows Hello. I wish I had a number pad on the Blade 18. That's kind of like my biggest gripe with it. And the fan profiles and fan noise is very good on the Blade 16 and 18, comparatively speaking, to the SCAR series. So if you're someone who's more sensitive to fan noise, there's also that for the Blade series. So um, like if you're trying to game with your just your speakers, the Blade series is a better overall gaming experience just sitting in a hotel room or sitting in your room with the, 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 the laptop in front of you playing games. Um, that said, the SCAR 16 and 18 can still have very good gaming experience with the acoustics when you're putting it into silent or performance mode. Um, so it really depends. Now, I don't know if we have any coil wine on the SCAR 16. I will be testing that today to see if we have coil wine. That's one of the most common questions about the SCAR 16. So without further ado, now that we've done that detailed comparison between a bunch of the competitors to the SCAR 16, let's dive into the unboxing for real this time. All right, sweet. Okay, so let me scoot this out of the way. Here we are, this is the, this is the box, this is the design. Uh, it's very similar to the uh, SCAR 18 box. It's almost exactly the same. All right. And let me switch camera angles so you can see this a little better. I'm going to back up here. And I'm going to turn this light on. All right. So there's the box. Let's go ahead and Open it up. You got several flaps here. And I 
think it's this way. Yeah, so you gotta make sure you open this the right way up or the laptop will fall out, which is not good. But at least Asus kind of warns you if you're opening it upside down. It says flip over, it says like flip over or something, so. So that's how the box is, uh, that's how the laptop is packaged, just like that. And this is, uh, I like this packaging overall. And it's not, it's not like super high-end premium packaging, but it's not bad packaging. We've got a plastic wrap on it and inside of here, let me tilt, let me go a little higher and tilt down a little more. All right. So inside of here, we have our power adapter. Shabam. All right. I actually have another power adapter, so we don't need to get this one out. Uh, and you also have your exchangeable cab. This will uh, basically let you change out one of the plastic pieces on the back of the laptop. Well, this basically, um, it's it's minor. Like you could you could do some customization with this. Like I don't know, painting it or something. Um, if you want it to be blue, but I wish they would give you like multiple color options for this out of the box. That'd be pretty cool. Um, all right, and then we got our warranty information cards here. And let's take a quick look at these. So quick step on quick steps on how to register. Um, thank you for purchasing an Asus laptop. Register your laptop to receive Asus Accidental Damage Protection, I believe. Yeah, Accidental Damage Protection. See, this comes with Accidental Damage Protection. That's pretty freaking awesome. Um, let me show you that so you can read this if you want. Um, the, the, I think this is the only laptop this year that comes with accidental damage protection out of the box. I don't think any of the other laptops come with that. Um, and this should just have a one year warranty, I believe. All right, so a little quick setup guide here. Nothing special really. And then you got your warranty card. All right. But uh, but yeah, so you gotta make sure you register though if you want that accidental protection. You can't just ignore ignore that. I think if you like wait too long, you won't get the accidental protection. I don't know. So you definitely would want to be on top of that. All right, so here is the laptop. Yeah. All right, so right here. Wait, well, come on. All right, so right here we've got a few different things. Ultra high refresh rate, 240 hertz, HDR 1000 VESA display, 100% DCI B3 color gamut coverage, NVIDIA Advanced Optimus, 15 degree lower temperatures because of liquid metal conductor not extreme and maximized airflow with a triple fan system and zero db ambient cooling if you want to do super quiet gaming or workloads like if you're in a library or something um all right so that's all cool we'll take this off for now and put it onto this plastic and let's close this up and put this back away. Now, if this laptop doesn't have any issues, I will be including this laptop in my uh, laptop review list resale program. So if you don't know what that is, that is uh, basically uh, if you want to become a channel member, there's a join button right below the live stream right now. And when you join, you'll be able to uh, fill out an application to get on a wait list. And when you get on that wait list, the top person on the wait list gets an opportunity to buy from my review laptops that I'll be reselling. Now, I'm only going to resell the laptops that I love or really think are good and I can recommend. Um, I'll be returning the ones that uh, I don't recommend, right? So, um, 
And I'm only gonna sell laptops that, as far as I know, have zero known issues with them. Like if there's dead pixels or anything like that, um, then I won't include it. So I just turned it on, but I just realized we gotta take the bottom off. So let me just go ahead and turn it off again. Okay, cool. All right. And we should also show this side by side with a few other laptops, all right? Okay, so first up, side by side, we've got the Blade 16. The Blade 16 is basically the exact same width, but not as deep. It's going to be a little more portable because it's not as deep. Next up, we have the Strix G18. Now, the G18 is the exact same size as the SCAR 18. So if you want to see what these look like side by side, that's what these look like. It's very similar. Uh, like it's basically the, the this G18 and the SCAR 18 have the exact same footprint. So um, this is the exact same comparison here. And uh, yeah, and if you want to see what it looks like when I open them side by side, You can see how big of a difference it is as well. The, the 18 inch, the, the 18 inch is gonna be better to game on in a sense that it's like a bigger all around display. So you can see more details. But uh, with the 16 inch, I would say you can just sit a little bit closer, you know? And, uh, and you get a similar experience. It's really all about how close you're sitting to the, to the laptop in question. All right, and here is the Alienware M16. All right, so for the Alienware M16, the scar is just a little narrower. We got a little bit of an extra chunk here, about three quarters of an inch. And then on the front, we got about an inch difference as well. So that's how this thing stacks up to the competition size-wise. And here are the power bricks. I've shown these several times, but I'll show them again here. Um, so we've got the So right here's the power brick. This is the this is gonna be the power brick for the Scar and Strix series. 330 watts. These are all 330 watt power bricks. This is the Blade 16 and 18, and this is gonna be the GT77, the Alienware M16, Alienware M18. It's the biggest, beefiest one out of all of them. Um, and so the Asus one is not as good as the Razer, but it's close. It's really not far behind. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and take the bottom off. be using the iFixit kit here. We want Flow X16, please, LOL. Uh, well, the thing is, I it's not for sale yet, so I can't buy one, but I'll ask Asus to send me one. I don't know if they will. That is one that I would really love to check out. Um, so for this, you just need a Phillips head screwdriver. Nothing too special. Um, but you probably want it to be magnetic, so it's a lot easier to grab the screw. All right, so we're just gonna start going around the sides here. Scoot it a little further back. Can you overclock the 4090? 
Um, yeah, you can overclock the 4090. We're going to be overclocking it today. Uh, but there is limitations because the, basically the voltage curve on a 4090 will only let you go so high. So unless the manufacturer has like basically boosted the VBIOS to increase the voltage curve and the clock speeds based on the vo voltage curve. Um, and then sub subsequently, they also have to like make better VRMs included with the laptop as well, right? You can't just boost things randomly without serious ramifications if you mess it up. All right, so uh, yeah, so you, if, if you're gonna do a serious overclock on a laptop like this, then you, you gotta also have it be designed to take that kind of voltage. And I know that the, um, there's been quite a, quite a few different laptops have overclocked they, they might say they're all, all 175 watts, but the performance you actually get from them is drastically different. Um, so it's very interesting to see that this year. So now I've removed all the screws. Oh, there's one more screw in the middle here. Um, I've removed all the screws and I just have the last screw, which is this screw. And this is a pop-up screw, so watch carefully. As I undo this one. All right, it created a little gap there so that I can get my prying tools in there to get it uh, up and off, right? So it makes it very easy to take this laptop apart. All right, so I, I probably don't even have to take this laptop into my lap take it all apart, but I probably will just in case. So it's still easier no matter what, even if I don't technically have to. Plus this way I get to show off my Into the AM t-shirt. There's a link in the description if you want to pick up some t-shirts. So this laptop, because of the pop-up screw and because uh, Asus this year removed the ribbon cables, it's so much easier to open this laptop up than ever before. And I love that. So all I'm using is the guitar pick so far, and I only need to use one guitar pick. Um, don't need to use two tools. Like a lot of these laptops are taking like two tools. They take like five minutes to get apart, but with one guitar pick and the pop-up screw, you can get this thing off in like a minute. It's pretty quick. Boom, check out that shirt. It's pretty awesome. 10% off, link in the description, and if you do use it, it does help support me as a content creator, but uh, yeah. No big deal if you don't want to use you know, get the t-shirt or you don't like it, whatever. Uh, so, sweet. This thing is an awesome little laptop. Let's take a look at the inside and evaluate our internals. So, this features a three-fan design. And I think I can... Can I up the exposure a little bit so you can see a little better? Yeah, there we go. All right, so... Here is the layout. We've got an M.2 right here. We've got a second M.2 over here. So we have two SSDs in RAID 0 on this laptop then. So two M.2s. And that's going to give us faster read and write speeds, but it does inhibit our ability to upgrade the laptop for less money. Because like my... Um, some laptops are going to come with a one, two terabyte SSD, and that's going to basically make it cheaper to upgrade for you because you can have one slot be completely open already. Um, though, if you're going to upgrade both slots anyway, then it doesn't really matter that much, but it just depends. All right, and then we got two sticks of sodium RAM. Let's go ahead and take a look at what our RAM is and our SSDs. Let's pull the SSD cover back if I can. I can't see the brand of this SSD yet. It was made in Vietnam. Oh, it's a Samsung SSD. Okay, I missed I missed it. That's nice. Uh, so here is the SSD. It says Samsung Electronics in the bottom left. Um, I don't know exactly what is 
uh, the models are here, but you can read it if you want to. And so we should have two of those. And then here is our RAM module. It's uh, SK Hynix, made in Korea. 16 gigs, 1RX8, PCI, uh, PC5, 4800. So uh, this is not super expensive RAM. SK Hynix is one of the cheaper brands, and you might be able to get better performance if you were to upgrade it. You likely could get better performance if you upgrade both the SSD and the RAM, honestly. So um, at least, yeah. Mine came with a Samsung. Mitchell says, no, not Samsung. Well, it says Samsung on it. Do you, you say you don't want, oh, you think you're, you're saying you don't like Samsung. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> LOL. I haven't had any problems with it yet, but uh, I suppose everyone has their horror stories, right? Um, now, let's take a look at our internal layout some more. We've got our RGB ribbon cable. Uh, sorry, our RGB ribbon light bar along this thing here. It's pretty sweet that there's no ribbon cables now attached to the uh, bottom pa panel. We've got our uh, speakers right here. Ooh, they're kind of uh, wobbly a little bit. That probably helps prevent uh, vibration on the chassis, having this wobble. Um, and then we've got a 90 watt hour battery right here. We've got, uh, let's see if our Wi-Fi, our Wi-Fi is located underneath our M.2 slot here. So if you're gonna upgrade that, you're gonna take the M.2 slot away. And it's an Intel AX211 for our Wi-Fi. I believe that was the same one on the SCAR 18. And uh, for our thermal design, I love the thermal design in this laptop. It's phenomenal. We got a triple fan setup. And look at all of the exhaust fins, all right? So we got an exhaust fin, big beefy one over here on the left. We got a huge one along the entire rear of the laptop. And then we got another one on the right over here. Now, if there was any way that Asus could eventually add maybe a fourth fan right here to blow air more directly on these heat fins, like across all of this area somehow, just throwing air out here, I think that would really help their thermals even better. But Still, the way this is designed, we have all of these foam ridges that's designed to direct the air from this fan out and across the VRMs and across this GPU right here primarily. But that's going to help keep the whole center of the laptop cooler. And I really love that design. Like it is one of the most ingenious designs we've seen um, from a laptop in a long time and I think this is this really helps the temperatures on the SCAR 16 especially considering how high of a wattage we're pulling through only a 16 inch chassis that only weighs five and a half pounds five and a, this is going to be as far as I know this is going to be the most performance per pound that you can buy in a laptop um, period like it is the lightest weight most performance as far as I am aware currently all right that may not be true as we go along. Maybe we'll find some other laptops that are very competitive or maybe slightly edge this one out. But this one's going to basically be in the top performance per pound category in the top five, no matter what this year. It's so, it's so good on that, on that front. All right. So uh, examining our heat pipe layout, we've got a dedicated CPU heat pipe that goes to this side. Then we have two shared heat pipes. And notice that this, this, there's another heat pipe here that overlaps these existing heat pipes to transfer heat and then also uh, utilize the full rear. And that's true on this right side as well. So what this, the heat basically is gonna be generated from the CPU, it's gonna go up here, and then it's gonna be transferred and it's gonna be dissipated across this whole rear. And it's obviously not gonna be as efficient as if this, this whole heat pipe went across everything directly, but it's still gonna be helpful. It's gonna help a little bit, all right? And then we got another heat pipe right here that's gonna be across the VRMs. And we got a heat plate right here as well on the VRMs. So basically super dedicated, super strong um, heat pipe layout for this laptop chassis. We've got a dedicated heat pipe to the GPU right here. Two, these two shared heat pipes uh, across the center of the GPU, that's gonna help the thermals 
Uh, basically, go on both fans, or all three fans can help the GPU, all three fans can help the CPU, though this third fan really mainly helps the, the, the GPU, okay? The CPU doesn't quite get as much help from this third fan because it's not directly over it, but it still will help blowing across the center here. Uh, we also have this other heat pipe that is just designed, I guess there's other uh, components here underneath here that they're trying to cool and they're, they're basically trying to transfer heat from this little loop up to the three big heat pipes to be transferred out to the ends and the fins and to be uh, removed from the laptop. Overall, I love this thermal cooling solution. It's the probably the best one in a 16 inch laptop right now, I think. Um, and, then on, on, and then on top of that, on top of that to boot, we have liquid metal conduct on extreme, which is basically pure gallium. So it's gonna it's gonna conduct the heat really, really well on this laptop. And I, uh, I think we're gonna see some very good performance for a 16 inch laptop. Uh, can it go up to 128 gigs? I believe you're talking about the RAM? No. This does not go up to 128 gigs. It only has two sodium slots. The maximum is going to be 64 gigs. All right, so popping that thing back together was really easy. I love easy. Um, it makes for a much, like eight, opening and closing Asus laptops usually are the easiest. I would say the Razer laptops this year are also very easy because they're not really popped together. They're just like the unibody chassis is just seamless and so it just comes apart really easily. Um, but this is very easy to, to put together and take apart, which I love that if you need to do a lot of upgrades to your laptop or you wanna tune it regularly, clean the fans or, or whatever, it's really great. Is it the mini, mini LED screen? Yes, we've got the mini LED version of the SCAR 16. As far as I know, all, uh, all the versions of the SCAR 16 feature a mini LED one, including the 4080 at $28.99. GPU never tops 78 degrees. Yes, mini LED, it's amazing. Yeah, it's really good. Um, what's your opinion on uh, gaming tablets? I think gaming tablets are really cool as long as you don't have super high expectations for your performance. Um, and the only, the, like the, you could check out my video on the Flow uh, Z13, which is the gaming tablet from Asus. It looks pretty freaking sick. I have I made one a couple months ago. I made a video overview of it when I had, got hands on with it at CES. Uh, if you hook it up to the XG Mobile, you're gonna get really good performance. Without the XG Mobile, you gotta taper your expectations at least a little bit but it's got a great display on there and should be a great all-around performer, the Flow Z13 for gaming tablets. Other than that, there's not too many gaming tablets. I don't know, unless you're planning to use an external um, eGPU or something with them. So that's the only one on my radar right now, at least, but I'm sure there might be a couple more. Okay, so all the screws are tight. We're good to fire it up now. All right, real quick overview of the build quality. We've got a metal top lid. This is the removable piece. This, you can change this piece out. It attaches magnetically. And uh, along the bottom, we have basically like this is hard plastic. And there's a lot of uh, ventilation through here for intake, air intakes. And we also have these big rubber feet that help give some airflow underneath the laptop. Um, and... The, uh, this logo right here, this ROG logo does light up and this is also a light bar along the back. Um, so when I fire this up, um, let me see if I can get it to turn on. It's an interesting, I've had like a number of laptops this year that don't wanna turn on unless the power is plugged in. I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, it's a bit weird in my opinion. <laughs> All right, so here's the light bar. We got the ROG logo, this is customizable. You can turn this RGB off if you're not a fan of RGB. It's easy to turn off. Um, it's just a hot key away to turn it all off. And uh, if you like the RGB though, it is very bright and very vibrant. If I turn these lights off, um, you'll be able to see how bright and vibrant it is. 
Uh, I suppose I should turn this one off too. It's, it's a really great all around looking device. Um, it looks really good and the RGB on the front and back both look really good, I think. It's one of the best looking RGB implementations currently on the market. Probably the best RGB implementation in my opinion. Um, now, like it used to be the Legion 7i and now since the Legion 7i took a giant dookie on itself, uh, that no longer is the best RGB implementation anymore. Um, the, uh, yeah, so if you wanna log into this, you've got to do a number pad, like a, a password or a pin. Um, one thing that is cool is you do have a built-in number pad into the touchpad there. All you have to do is hold on the right side up here for like two seconds or maybe even a half a second and it pops up, goes away. Um, and this obviously does work quite well. Um, let me go ahead and do that. There we go. Just typed it in on the number pad and it looks really good, I think. Okay. Uh, Matt says, honestly, this laptop is amazing. Yeah, it is pretty sweet. Okay, cool. So we are in to Windows, I have done a BIOS update. We're on the latest BIOS. We have done a driver's update. We're on the latest NVIDIA driver. We've done the game updates on a bunch of different games. Let's go ahead and go over the ports for you. Um, so looking at the ports, they're pretty simple. Right side, we have uh, two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2s. And those are gonna be very fast for USB A's, uh, but your USB C over here and, US and Thunderbolt 4 are gonna be faster. Now the Thunderbolt 4 goes to the integrated GPU if you need to do battery presentations. And then this USB C with DisplayPort 1.4, they both have DisplayPort 1.4. So both of these ports could uh, do 240 Hertz to the monitor behind me. Um, if you want to do high performance gaming on ultra high resolution, high refresh rate displays, uh, HDMI 2.1 right here. And these both also have power delivery, I believe up to 130 Watts. It might only be 100 Watts. I think it's only 100 Watt, but the Zephyrus lineup, I think is 130 this year. We have a headset port, HDMI 2.1. And then we have a upward facing ethernet port and it is two and a half gigabit ethernet. And we have a power adapter port. So no ports are located on the back because it's all fan exhaust. So uh, what about coil wine? That's a great question. Let's do coil wine right now. Let's see if we can hear it. So I'm gonna put the laptop into silent mode and we're gonna load up Time Spy benchmark test and we're gonna see if we've got coil wine or not. I put it into silent mode using the hot key here and the, uh, there are a number of hotkeys on this keyboard. I really like the layout of this keyboard, by the way. I don't like the feel of the keyboard as much as I used to, because it used to be mechanical in 2021, but this is the same layout from the SCAR 15 that I had previously. And I really like this layout. We got full size. Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit. This display is so dang bright. It is like, <laughs> if you're not, paying attention to it, like we're in your dark room. It's like so bright, it's kind of obnoxiously bright and you have to turn the brightness down. And I'm, I'm not kidding, I do that. And same for the Blade 18, honestly, the screen can be so bright at over 500 nits too. Um, okay, so here is the keyboard layout. We've got full size number pad arrow keys. And if you press FN, you can do home and page up, page down. You've got fast forward, rewind on music, stop, play a delete key, airplane mode, go to sleep, disable trackpad. Uh, and then we've got your projectors. Zoom in a little more here. Uh, we've got brightness up and down, uh, copy, paste. We've got our fan profile, but we also have a fan profile button up here. So you can press this to rotate between turbo performance and silent. And then you have also the ROG button up here. This is gonna launch you into Armory Crate. Uh, to adjust settings. We've got mute mic button, volume up and down button. 
And then uh, we also have the Aura Sync. This is gonna let you rotate through different keyboard lightings. And um, in general, I would just leave it on rainbow unless you're gonna do like sync it to music, which it's really cool when you sync it to music. You have three brightness levels on the RGB and that does turn off the RGB on the back. The light bar and the rear logo turns off when you uh, turn that off. So, um, and if you want to, you can customize it so that the, uh, uh, the back lighting on the keyboard is white and the rear lighting is not turned on in the Ar Armory Crate software. So if you're in a business meeting and you still wanna have backlights without looking like a rainbow unicorn dude, um, you can totally do that, or girl, whoever you are. Uh, so it's pretty sweet, the customization this laptop has. You just have to be willing to work with the software a little bit to make it happen. Um, all right, so let us Go ahead and hop into Time Spy here. We are in silent mode, right? We are in silent mode. Yes, we are in silent mode. And I'm gonna listen for coil wine. And I'm gonna put the mic right next to the laptop for this coil wine test. Um, we might as well just see what we get. All right, we're gonna see what we get in Time Spy in silent mode, why not? And we'll do a coil wine test at the same time. All right, so. Cool. All right, so here we are. During this test, I don't think I'm gonna do full zoom in on the display. I'm gonna lower the display brightness too so it's a little uh, less dominating <laughs> to the camera. Uh, and then we're gonna have the mic, I'm gonna move the mic around the laptop and kind of hear, do we hear any fan noise? Um, I'm curious what the time spy result will be in silent because I haven't ran a time spy result in silent. This is kind of be interesting actually. Um, but it should it should not be too high, right? It's gonna be severely power limiting the RTX 4090. Uh, Luffy asks, I've heard there's some issues regarding blooming. Uh, we'll show you that uh, in a little bit. There is definitely some blooming on the mini LED display. Every single mini LED display I've used so far has some blooming. That's, I think, the biggest downside to the mini LED displays. Um, so that's probably the biggest issue, but uh, very, I, I haven't personally noticed it. All right, listening. Do you hear it? There's a little bit of coil wine. I have the mic right next to it, right? So you're gonna hear way more. Like if I hold it right where you normally would be. Like sitting back a little bit, I can't hear it almost at all. But when I'm close, I can definitely hear some coil wine. All right, taking a look at our stats, uh, we're gonna need to get HW info up because we're not seeing our full stats right now. You see this? We're, we're gonna need to get our power limits and our temperatures up. Um, save the ants, they're screaming, yeah, <laughs> right? Vitamin K says, yes, finally a SCAR 16 review. Uh, yeah, so overall there's definitely coil wine on this unit that I have here, uh, but I will say that at a normal using distance, I don't think I would hear it. Um, at least not, like right now I have another fan going in the other part of the room, but it's not like, right now it just kind of sounds like a low whir to a fan or something, you know, like fans on low. Here, let me turn my fan off. All right. I have the mic. Basically, right now you can kind of hear my Blade 18 fans a little bit, but uh, the laptop's so dang quiet. Literally, the coil wine's louder than the fans because the fans are so quiet. Um, it's it's impressive how how noiseless this is, but in a super quiet environment you would hear the coil. I think if you're like in an empty house with no extra noise at all, or if you're in a library type of thing, 
you might be able to hear it a little bit. But I, I don't think this is, this is certainly not severe coil whine, I don't think. Um, and if you have the fans on at all, I would not, I would never hear that coil whine. The fan, like even fans on performance mode with slight, slight fan noise is going to completely mask the coil whine. The Strix G18 coil whine was definitely louder, more clicky. Of course, that's going to vary from unit to unit. The CPU is not doing any coil whine. So that's kind of interesting. The CPU is not doing coil whine where the GPU did coil whine. So it's probably the GPU VRMs uh, that have the coil whine. Wow. So little on the graphics score. So this is why you wouldn't really want to do silent mode. Uh, so that's silent mode, 6,866. Holy schmoly. Um, that's why you wouldn't want to do silent mode, typically speaking. Our CPU, time, our CPU score is actually really good for silent mode. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, okay. So, so yeah, you're only really going to play games in silent mode when you're um, doing like an older game where you set the settings a little bit lower or something. Uh, or you're okay with less than 60 FPS. Or, it really depends on the game, right? Some games are going to run a lot better than others. Okay, so, so there's the coil wine test. I would say the coil wine's existent, but not severe. I really wouldn't call that severe. Let's do a display test. Mitchell says, in certain games it gets much worse. But are you playing the laptop in silent mode? Because I, I would probably almost, I would never play in silent mode. At, at worst, I would only be playing in performance mode, right? So um, and on my lowest settings, I would just be in performance mode. So basically, like, in performance mode, I don't think I would hear that at all. And any, any, any fan noise would negate that kind of coil whine. So i got to plug this in first. Um, do, 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 do. All right, I got to type in my code here and then we can do our test. And let's see here. So looking up the code, there it is. It'll be very interesting to see if we match uh, the specs of the Zephyrus Duo display, which did, I think, 1,018 nits brightness. Um, so that's kind of my target hope. Um, you got to keep in mind that with HDR displays like this, um, the peak 1,100 nits brightness rating is when there is mostly dark images on most of the laptop display, and then a few really bright images. That's when you're going to get to the 1100 nits brightness. And you normally are not going to get to 1100 nits brightness uh, under normal circumstances very often, um, right? You're going to get to 1100, like you're going to get, a, you're going to approach it pretty often, but it's not going to be like continuously 1100 nits brightness. The, the, the sustained brightness on this display is 600 nits. If it was like an all white image across the whole display. All right, so let's go ahead and start this test. Brian Guerra with the $2 super chat, he says, can the coil wind be fixed over time and best bang? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by best bang, but uh, coil wine can be fixed uh, over time or really fix itself over time. And so it's kind of be interesting to see how many laptops kind of burn in, if you will, and then no longer have coil wine issues. So uh, it's not guaranteed that that's going to happen. But I think for most people, 
the coil whine on this that I just experienced was so minor. If they're, they're only got, they are only going to notice it in silent fan mode. And if you're always going to be playing in silent fan mode, then why are you buying a huge monstrous gaming laptop or like, you know, a big gaming laptop like this that can go to so much higher performance. We saw silent mode just totally gimp the performance, right? It was only 6,000 times by. That's really bad. That's like a quarter of your performance. So uh, I think at worst, people are going to be running in performance mode. And then I don't think people are going to notice that basically ever. Uh, very, very rarely. We'll have to see. We'll see if I hear it later in the review as we go along. I'll try to listen for it um, and see if I notice it when we go into different games and stuff. But I don't, I don't anticipate it being a deal breaker or a big issue for most people. Uh, Ando24 says, my coil line went away. Yeah, so basically like the VRMs uh, might be, um, the VRMs might be vibrating on, on the initial, like as you're getting them burned in basically. And then after a while, sometimes their vibrations can go away or settle down. So um, I've seen several comments about the Strix Scar uh, series that where the, the, the coil wine went away later. So, um, Sean John says, I too want Best Bang. <laughs> so Brian says, Best Bang for the buck. I don't know exactly what you mean, Brian, uh, but between the 4080 and 4090 versions of this laptop, I think the 4080 version is probably going to be a slightly better bang for the buck than the 4090 version. Gaming Performance says, I love this laptop. I have uploaded tons of performance tests. I can say it performs exactly like the SCAR 18. Most powerful 16-inch laptop, and the temps are really great. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll find out today. Uh, anyway, Brian, thank you so much for the super chat. Frost with the TRY55. He says, please do undervolting via throttle stop. I was able to undervolt CPU core by minus 170 and cache up to minus 120. It made a huge difference on SCAR 18. Uh, Frost, thank you so much for the tip. I, did, I was reading about that um, earlier today, actually, on Reddit. Someone was uh, doing undervolting on the SCAR and was able to get higher undervolts. So uh, we're gonna try that today. We'll try throttle stop undervolting. All right, so uh, here is our rating. We got 100, let me reposition this a little bit more in front. And lower it down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we got 100% of sRGB, 92% of Adobe RGB, and 90% of the P3 color gamut. Now, you gotta keep in mind that my Spider 5 Elite underestimates color gamuts by like eight to nine percent. So this is basically close to 100% RGB and close to 100% P3 color gamut. Very good color gamut. This is the, basically the highest you can test on the Spider 5 Elite for the most part. Um, our NIT's brightness at lowest was 87. That's a bit bright on the brighter side. Contrast ratio, very good. NIT's brightness on the high side was only 832. Obviously, that's insanely good, but that's not as good as what we had on the Zephyrus Duo getting over 1,018. It makes me wonder if the display might be in a slightly different display mode or something, because I know there's a couple different display modes in Armory Crate. So let's check that out. So inside of here... You can see that right now we're in GPU mode, ultimate mode. And see if I can I drag these. All right, where is the display? Multi-zone backlight right here. So uh, right, you can see right there is the setting. Um, hundreds of mini LED zones operate independently. Dimming dark areas of the bright screen, deeper blacks, reaching up to 1,100 nits brightness in areas for vibrant, punchy colors. This mode is ideal for gaming and watching movies, especially HDR. To enable HDR, go to window settings, display, and turn on use HDR. Let's try to turn on HDR and see if we get a different result. So use HDR is off. We'll try flipping it on. Dun, dun, dun. The display went black. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Brian, for the $2 Super Chat, he asks, are there any AMD versions of the SCAR-16? Uh, not that I know of. 
There's going to be the SCAR 17 and maybe a SCAR 15 with AMD, though. Any update on when you're getting your Aura 17s? Not yet, TCAM. I have not heard anything from them. Uh, so far, our display is black, which is not good. <laughs> this, is, this is not ideal. Uh, that's for sure. You hit the black screen HDR issue. So uh, what is the best way to bypass this issue? Gary, is there a way to roll it back? Do I just got to force it off? All right, so I'm just, oh, I'm holding the power uh, button for like 10 seconds. And hopefully we can boot into Windows, no problem. Um, we'll see. Hopefully it doesn't have a problem. Uh, the black screen's a bug with discrete GPUs only set to dynamic from the BIOS and then set Optimus on the control panel. Okay, so we might have to we might have to go into the BIOS and change our mode from right now we're in GPU ultimate mode, which disables the integrated GPU. So we probably have to might have to turn that off. Oh, and we got ourselves a Windows update coming through with perfect timing. Matt says, yes, this is a known BIOS bug. I'm pretty sure Asus would fix this. Um, just got to give them time. They changed the whole cooling solution on the 17X this year. No, I had the 17H first and sent it back to for the 17X. It's great. Only wish it would be 16 by 10. Yeah, the, it's too bad the Aura 17X is only... Well, looks like we restarted again. Um, and you can see the blooming a little bit there. You see the blooming around the Asus logo? That's kind of like, it's it, with the human eye, it's kind of hard to see it. I think I see it a little bit better with, um, I see it a little bit more on the camera, honestly. Um, so it really depends on what you're looking at. Is it possible to turn off those lights under the screen? Uh, oh, the status lights? I'm not sure. Also... All right, I'm gonna turn off these laptops or this computer and these lights so that we can get better display test here. With less reflections on it. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting that HDR mode is now on. It's working. HDR mode is working. What? That's interesting that it restarted and now it's it's going okay. So let's go ahead and try the Spider uh, Elite again. Now that we have HDR going. I'm curious. Uh, is there uh, much difference between the mini LED on the GT77 and the Blade 16? Um, so the Blade 16 and GT77, the biggest difference is your resolution. Your both of those are 4K panels, and so your if you're trying if your goal is to um, you know if your goal is to get the best resolution, then going with the Blade or the GT77 makes a lot of sense, right? If your goal is instead to go for uh, better gaming performance in games, then I feel like the QHD 240 hertz is going to be a better option on the SCAR 16, just in general. If I were to choose between, if I was forced to choose, we've got to have be dramatic with it, right? Uh, if I was forced to choose one, would you choose the SCAR 16 or the Alienware M16? Uh, I'd go SCAR 16 between those two, I think. Even though the Alienware M16 has much better ports than Windows Hello.
Uh, and the main reason for that is really the Alienware has tons of potential, but the software on it is a nightmare. Um, and I'm just tired of the headache of the Alienware Command Center. And it was supposed to be fixed this year, and it totally wasn't. Maybe now it is because it's been like a month since I tested the Alienware M16. But uh, if the Alienware M16 had their software fixed, I would definitely consider the M16 a lot more seriously. And I'd probably... I I would potentially pick it over the Scar 16. I don't know. Main, mainly because of the ports. I'm, I need a lot of ports, and the Scar 16 doesn't really meet my ports needs. So that's the main reason I would consider the Alienware. Um, Martin with the 200CZK. Thanks so much for the super chat. He says, hey, I'm trying to decide between the GT77 Helios 18 uh, for the 4080. I use a laptop for content creation and occasional gaming. Should I wait for the Helios 18 or get the GT77 right away? So if you're going to go the GT77 route, I would really recommend going to the 4090 on that laptop because it's only $300 to upgrade to the 4090. That's one of the laptops where it's super worth going to the 4090. Um, if you're going to spend 40, it's like $42.99 for the 4080, $46.99 for the 4090. Like, why wouldn't you spend... You, it's three hundred dollars more, less than ten percent the cost of the laptop, and you get easily like a fifteen percent gain in performance at the four K resolution. So, I would say definitely go for that uh, forty ninety version in that scenario. That said, the forty eighty is in stock at more places, so it's a little easier to get. That's that's the tricky part. Um, yeah, the the response time on the GT seventy seven it's not very good, and that's to like the biggest. That, to me, is the biggest drawback to the GT77 and the main reason why I couldn't keep it as my main laptop. So uh, our, our color gamuts appear to be the same. That's good. Let's go ahead and just show you this. So this is the HDR results. Now that we're in HDR mode. Interesting. Our, geez, our brightness went down pretty noticeably in HDR mode. Our contrast ratio went up. So only 484 nits measured in HDR mode. Super interesting. Super interesting. So let's try, can we change HDR mode back off again? That seems oddly low, if I'm being honest. I, it makes me wonder if something's going on. Maybe the HDR is not, just not working or something. Okay, so HDR turned off. Let's just try our brightness and contrast test again. I want to see, I want to verify our results basically. This does seem brighter to my eyes. And I'm just going to do all, I'm going to do all the tests. Just, I'm just going to hit go. I'm not going to worry about changing the brightness. Yeah, Dennis says something is off. Yeah, it should be it should be higher. In this time, thirty sixty plays ultra all games. Uh, thirty sixty can't play ultra in all games. Definitely can't play ultra in Hogwarts. That's for sure. Um, HDR is wacky right now with this BIOS. Yeah, I'm guessing it's some kind of bug with the like we we black screened when we were turning on HDR, and I'm guessing it's just not working correctly. So um, I would anticipate bugs being fixed by ASUS. They're usually pretty dang good about it. And I'll try to let them know we ran into bugs with HDR. Thousand nits is useless. Dude, if you're outdoors, it's so nice. Or if you have a very bright environment. Okay, so we got 826. 825, 826, that was our highest. And we just did the test the same way for all of them. Pretty interesting uh, that it's not as high as the Duo. But uh, basically, there's the, the way I would evaluate it is um, this is... Basically, there's a lot of white on the screen when we're doing these tests, 
And that the the lower amounts of white, like if there was only one white bar in the middle being shown, that that would show you the full brightness potential, um, versus like there's you know there's white bars all over the display. So, um, that would be the reasoning, in my opinion, why we didn't get over a thousand nits brightness. Now the the Duo 16 did go over a thousand even in the same test. So I don't know exactly what's up with that. 826 is still excellent. Though you got to keep in mind that 826 is like mind numbingly bright, right? So, anyway, still exceptionally very good. Just I wish it was, I wish it was what Asus had rated it, you know? Uh, but at the same time, I understand why. I understand why we're not testing that. And I think that we would test over 1100 nits if we had HDR content running. Um, speaking of HDR content running, let's go ahead and look at up a YouTube. HDR type of video. Let's, I don't know. And just see, uh, let's just see what this looks like on this display. And I'm going to do 4K. You can really see the blooming on the camera up here in the top right. But in the human vision, I don't see that at all. I don't see any blooming up there, just so you know. And I also want to point out that the GT77 Titan, which also is rated for over 1,000 nits, I think that did about 800 uh, something nits as well in the same test. So it is partially the limitations of the HDR display. These colors are super vibrant and punchy with very uh, noticeably peaky brights, uh, you know, whites like around here. Like these are like just super glorious looking. Um, that said, like this mini LED display is very, very good, especially the blacks are really, really good. That's probably the biggest thing about this is the darks, dark areas are just super freaking dark. We get a little bit of the blooming going on around some of these like really light images. And, and it's not quite perfectly black around those edges, but it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, you kind of got to be looking for it to notice it. If you're a graphics guy, like a, you know, um, like a graphic designer or something, you probably would notice the blooming more than me even. Is there any coil wine? We did a coil wine test a little while ago. Um, the black bars on 16 by nine make it look like it has a huge top and bottom chin. Um, yeah, the, that is one of the issues with 16 by 10 displays. 16 by nine content ends up with top and bottom black bars. So this is obviously very, gorgeous looking and it's the kind of thing that you're gonna be like you're when you get this laptop you definitely want to test videos like this to look for <laughs> look at how colorful and bright these images are it's insane um so the hdr i mean these are hdr videos i don't know if we're getting any kind of hdr coverage on these videos right now because we are not in hdr mode um, but we're just using the display in non HDR mode and it still looks freaking glorious. Um, so pretty interesting. I would love to see Asus fix that HDR bugginess. Anyway, that's enough about the display. The display is awesome. Let's check out the webcam. We got to check out the webcam. We got to check out the speakers. So here's the webcam. Wow. That is very low resolution. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is okay, Asus. This is an area we need some improvement in. Okay, <laughs> hey, it almost looks like there's some kind of like filter effect or something. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh my gosh. All right, so I am recording the video, and it's gonna be so bad. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so it's trying to adjust for the brightness. There it goes. Okay. A little bit brighter, a little bit better detail. Goodness, that is not a very good webcam. 
Um, this is another one of the reasons why I would choose a razor blade over a scar. Okay, webcam, that could definitely have some noticeable improvements here. <laughs> All right, um, cool. And uh, let's see here, what else? So let's do a speaker test. So we're gonna get logged in. Gonna get logged in and then we'll do our speaker test. And uh, I'm anticipating similar speakers to like the SCAR 18. That's what I'm anticipating. All right, so I'm gonna turn these lights back off again. All right, so we're gonna back the laptop, or back the camera up here. And we're gonna put the mic about 10 inches in front of the laptop. Let me put the Spider 5 Elite away real quick so it's out of the way. And let me put the toolkit away as well. Beautiful. All right, so we're, I think we're ready to go now. So, uh, la la la. Oh wait, let's do, wait, this is, they changed the order. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so we can just, we're gonna change the hotkey here to raise the volume up. And that looks good. So we're gonna do uh, Roar by Peter Spacey. I'll turn my... I'm gonna go and close the door for better sound isolation. All right, so here's Roar by Peter Spacey. Wazam? Okay. Seems very similar to the SCAR-18, maybe a hair less volume, um, but I believe we have this application we can go into, Dolby Access. You wanna make sure you go in here, at least you can play with the audio settings. So we've got, right now we're on music balanced. Let me try changing it to, to dynamic. Well, let's keep it in music balanced and let me play that song again. All right, and I'm gonna switch it to detailed. I'm gonna change it to dynamic. You hear how quieter the music is? Turn to the dynamic, it's a huge difference. All right, so. We're gonna retest that song from the beginning in dynamic because it was I massively that is massively louder in dynamic. All right. Next up is Half-Life Faded Aeon, which has a lot of like mids and highs.
That sounded really good. All right, La 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 by Deuce Williams. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think the speakers are basically exactly like the Scar 18. Like, I think they're probably the exact same speakers. Um, moderately high volume, decent ish bass. You know, there's some bass in there. There's moderately clear mids and highs. Uh, overall, what did I give the Scar 18? I think it was like an 8.7 or something like that, somewhere like in that range uh, out of total speaker quality. The, the, uh, the Blade 18 is definitely louder and more clear sounding. Um, the MacBook Pro is still king of laptop speakers, but this is still uh, going to fill a room pretty dang well with some decent audio, uh, at least a small to medium-sized room. All right, sweet. Uh, Raleigh Edward with the 50,000 IDR. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Uh, Legion 7 Ice, uh, 3080, use Kingston 32 gig, dual rank, memory enhanced Legion 7 i BIOS can't enable with dual rank. It can with single rank change or not. Um, I'm not sure, Raleigh, exactly what you're asking. But I think you're asking more of a support question. Um, and I don't know the, all the technical details about uh, the Legion 7 Ice BIOS capability and which memory is going to be compatible. You're really going to have to try to troubleshoot that with the Legion support if you want to go to that level of detail. So, all right. Uh, can you share a perspective on whether an SSD upgrade to the Samsung 990 Pro and RAID 0 would be worth it from a noticeable performance perspective? Um, unless you're doing some insane uh, file transfer stuff, the default SSDs in this should be plenty fast enough um, for the most part. There's very, very minimal noticeable improvement from upgrading SSD speeds, maybe slight improvements to load or transfer, transfer times. Um, even like PCIe Gen 5 is going to be super minimal improvements. Um, that's it. Let's go ahead and do a disk. Let's do a crystal. Let's do a crystal disk mark test. Yeah. Uh, man, there's so many different downloads. Jeez. I really dislike this. I guess we'll do text spot for the crystal disk mark. And I believe this is the download. Yeah. Your take on the display versus Razer Blade 16. Um, this is gonna have, w at least for the, the Blade 16 that I have is not the mini LED version. I have talked about this several times now. But uh, essentially, I think that you're going to not notice a huge, a huge difference between like detail between like a 4K and QHD display on the mini LEDs. The, the mini LED displays, regardless of what laptop you get, are going to have much better contrast and ultimate high levels of brightness. So here is Crystal Disk Mark. Uh, with the RAID 0 SSDs that we have in here. Actually, is it RAID 0? It says only one gig. Uh, yeah, no, it is. Yeah, so it's, it's two gigs, two gig drive. So we are in RAID 0. Look at that speed, 1100 for our read. It's very fast. GT77 would be amazing if it had a 1440p screen instead of 4K. I would agree that it would be better if it was a 240 hertz QHD 17 inch. Uh, Ando24 says, Throttle Stop is still locked for me on the latest BIOS. You have to go into uh, the settings, and I believe you have to enable undervolting, I think. If, I, if you're, I think you're talking about the same thing, but we're going to try that. We're going to see if we can get Throttle Stop to work. It'll be interesting. I'm going to show you how to do a basic undervolt, and then I'll try to use Throttle Stop for a moment. We're not going to spend too long on it. I'll spend a few minutes trying to use Soil Stop, though. I'm getting the Aura 17H tomorrow with 480. Want me to share benchmark results? Um, you can if you want, system. 
You can email me uh, your Time Spy and Cinemich R23 in the Maximum Fan Profile mode, because that's the important part. Uh, are you ready to test games? We are not ready to test games. We're going to do Cinemich R23, and we're going to try to do an Undervolt using Throttle Stop first. Ta says, can you do a comparison on the screen and the GT77 screen? Um, sure. Well, this is loading. Let me grab the GT77. It's going to be hard to fit the GT77 on this thing here, so bear with me. So I've got the GT77 right next to our SCAR-16. I'm going to grab the power brick, just put it up here for a second. We're not going to keep the GT7 up here for very long. I just want to kind of show you guys this side by side. Dude, 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 this is tricky to get them both on the... Okay, so it's almost done with the speed test on the uh, crystal disc mark. Are we on maximum brightness? We are now. And man, I love the keyboard on the GT77. It is so nice. All right, so neither display is in in uh, neither display is in We'll do that, that's fine, and cool. So neither display is in HDR mode. And I'll just go through some of the default Windows backgrounds. Here is your Crystal Disk Mark results, by the way. All right. That's impressive 11, 11.3K, uh, 11 read 10.3K write. Obviously, very, very good. All right, so here are the two displays side by side. You can see the 17 inch display is obviously bigger. All right, uh, let me set them both to maximum brightness. Okay, so I would say the GT77 displays a little brighter. They're both in the same ballpark of brightness. Uh, the GT77 I think is also set to a, like a, a thirstier color gamut spectrum. So right now I think the colors are a little more accurate on the SCAR and a little bit more punchy on the GT. But inside of here, uh, with MSI True Color, you can change it to be like Adobe RGB or P3 color gamut. So I'm gonna set it to P3 color gamut for some, some of these side-by-sides. Oh, it changed automatically. That's cool. But I, these are obviously both excellent displays, extremely vibrant and very bright. I think the GT77 display is just slightly more colorful, though. 
and it's slightly brighter as well. <coughs> Whew. Excuse me. Yeah, that's what I would say. I would say the GT77 is just a little bit brighter and slightly more colorful. Okay, so there's your side-by-side -side with the GT. All right, let's get into undervolting uh, and seeing if we can use throttle stop. I wish I could change the image back to what it was. Nah, whatever. All right, well, let's go to a dark image for the sake of camera. All right, so uh, to start with, we're gonna shut down the laptop. King Draven says, my Duo 16 has very close to no blooming. Yeah, I've noticed blooming on both the Duo 16 though and the Scar 16. And I think that they are pretty minor, but it is there if you're looking for it very carefully. All right, so I believe you press F12 to get into the BIOS. I'm tapping F12, let me see. It's either F12 or F2, I think it's all right, I press F2 and F12. I'm not sure if it's F12 or F2. One of those two. Uh, F7 to go to advanced mode. So uh, you gotta go to the advanced tab up here. Scroll down. And where is it that you gotta change to enable throttle stop, okay? I know that inside of here, core voltage offset configuration, this is where you go to do a basic BIOS undervolt. Okay. So you go to enable core voltage offset. And then you go 30 and you make sure you set it to minus. And this does a 30 millivolt undervolt. Um, and you're supposed to be able to do up to a minus 80. If I type in 79 though, notice it says not within valid input range. Okay. And notice there's a decent amount of uh, bloom around this button, by the way. <laughs> Pretty interesting. All right, so 30 is the maximum you can undervolt in the BIOS. Let me look around in here for any other settings. ERP, what does ERP stand for? So right here, um, notice that under active performance cores, you can disable or enable performance cores and efficiency cores. So if you want to, um, you can disable the efficiency cores for possibly better gaming performance on the P cores. It'd be interesting to try that out. I'm, I'm not sure exactly if that would make any difference. So chat, I know some of you were talking about doing um, undervolting in here. Aren't any settings, minus A should work. Um, minus A definitely does not work. It's definitely bugs still. Okay. So as far as I can tell, there is no settings in the BIOS here to change your undervolt. All right. And uh, yeah. So you, you've got your, you've got up to minus 30 right now in the bugged BIOS. It should be able to go up to minus 80. It still says you can't do that right now. I've, I have sent that bug to Asus. So this should be working on fixing it though. Uh, they did confirm that it needs to be fixed, so.
Can you talk about fan noise? Uh, well, we haven't really tried ramping the fans up in any kind of performance yet. Um, and in completely silent mode, yes, you can turn off the fans. Uh, it's very quiet. You might hear a coil whine in that scenario. But uh, if I just cover the camera here. You might hear a coil whine in that scenario, but I don't think you're going to hear anything else. All right. Now we really need to get in some game testing, but we're going to do, we're just going to download throttle stop and see if it gives us any options. We do have a, we do have a 30 millivolt uh, undervolt right now. So we at least have some undervolt going on. I don't think throttle stop will let us work. Uh, do anything here, but we'll find out here. We're about to find out. All right, so throttle stop, downloaded it. And uh, we're going to go into, I believe, F Fiverr here. And yeah, it's completely locked down. There's no options to change anything in here. Do you have the latest BIOS? I do have the latest BIOS. Noob question, why bother with an undervolt? It reduces temperatures and improves performance at the same time. So uh, basically undervolts, undervolts can be a noticeable boost to your performance. So throttle stop's not gonna work for undervolting, at least uh, to the best of my knowledge. Am I staring into the sun? How can Brandon stand it? <laughs> That's funny. So we do, we do have a minor undervolt though, right? It's not like we don't have any undervolt at all. Frost says, but how mine works on the SCAR-18. I'm guessing you have a different BIOS and in that BIOS version, uh, throttle stop is not being blocked. That would be my guess. All right, so. Uh, we're going to go to our settings in here, and I'm going to show you Armory Crate real quick. We're going to do a quick overview. It's going to take just a moment to go through this. Basically, right here, you have your uh, home button. This is going to give you your different power profiles. You've got silent, performance, turbo, and manual, and there is a hot key right above the F4 button to switch between these. So I can press this, and it'll switch between them. You cannot get into manual unless you go into Armory Crate. Now, in, uh, inside of Armory Crate, you do have to click the check button to activate it, all right? So once we get into manual fan mode, I have everything set to maximum fans here on the left. And we've got our power limits on our CPU also pushed all the way to the right, 140 and 175. Um, does undervolting give more power to the GPU instead of the CPU? Uh, not really maybe in certain circumstances, but m most of the time what it does is it just boosts your CPU performance with the same power level. Um, but maybe in certain circumstances it might help a little bit. All right, our GPU is also going to be at maximum fan, and there is a system fan in here. You can set the curve for the third fan as well. And for our base clock, we're going to do uh, 50 boost, 100 for our memory. So 50 and 100 for our uh, GPU overclock, and that's just baked into the manual mode. I did not set that. That's what ASUS does out of the box. GPU mode is in ultimate mode. This is gonna turn off the integrated GPU and disable things like Intel Quick Sync and also prevent you from getting good battery life. So you may not wanna keep it in GPU ultimate mode. We're gonna test in GPU ultimate mode for the uh, sake of the video, uh, it might slightly boost performance in certain games or slightly reduce temperatures in certain games. So that's Armory Crate in a nutshell. You can hear those fans starting to spin up. Most of the time, for most people, you probably just want to keep it in turbo or set your own manual fan uh, profile curves using this graph right here. All right, so we're in manual, man manual mode now. We're going to run Cinemage R23. For anyone that's curious about that, I did do more detailed CPU benchmark uh, testing, though. So for anyone that wants to see it, uh, check my live stream history. I, I paired this up against a Ryzen 9 7945HX CPU and did a bunch of CPU benchmarks side by side. So we're going to start with a multi-core rendering. 
Uh, we're just going to do a single run. There might be some other stuff running in the background that's going to prevent our performance from being as good, but it should should be pretty good right away here. I have already uh, done the latest GeForce uh, update TCAM today. We updated the drivers, and I'll show you what drivers we have here uh, at the beginning before we move on to dr doing game testing. So we got 31,820 for our first run. I've seen over 32, though. Let me go ahead and exit some of these extra applications. And let me show you GeForce Experience and our drivers. We're at, we're on 53129, release date today. So we're on the latest drivers that just came out today. All right, so 31,820, that's phenomenal performance for a 16 inch laptop. Um, it really, doesn't get much better than that. Uh, the main way it might get better is simply by being, having better undervolting. Uh, the Ryzen 7945HX does score better than this, though. Okay, so if you're after raw multi core performance, uh, the Ryzen is slightly higher, getting closer to 34,000 out of the box, 36,000 when undervolted, 32,173 uh, for our second run. Uh, yeah, Frost, I have the latest BIOS 306 too. It's weird that it's working for you and not for me, unless you change some setting that I didn't change. Tested in single core. I can show you the single core performance. Um, I don't want to test it in single core because it takes so long. But let me show you what we got yesterday for single core. What's up and welcome back to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech. It's a two, two, two. So so uh, right here we got 2172 for our single core performance. Uh, let's go ahead and I can show you HW info here. I also want to point out I have process lasso running and I have the So right here we have 2172 and for a 10 minute test on the Cinemage R23 on the SCAR 16 we got 30,792. All right, so uh, you guys can see that right? on the live stream here. Let me double check. Yeah, so you can see our 10 minute scores that we just did yesterday. So there's no point in us redoing these. The 10 minute score is uh, 30,792, 2172 for our single cores. Uh, if you wanna check out those tests, there's a gonna be, go to my channel, go to the Zephyrus Duo versus uh, SCAR 16 CPU benchmark video and you'll find that data. Uh, you can see the Ryzen did better on the multi-core, but worse on the single core. So 35,028 for multi-core, 19,042 for the single core. Now, the Ryzen was uh, undervolted significantly. Oh, the so the i9... Keep that in mind that you're going to get uh, less performance than that, typically, from the Ryzen. So... Uh, chip is 11.6% faster. Sweet. All right. Cool. All right. So that's uh, that's our that's our quick quick and dirty Cinebench run. I'll do a couple more tests just to show you what we got um, after a few more. But it should basically be around thirty two thousand uh, for quick and dirty tests uh, with this basic undervolt, and then with the ten minute test thirty point seven k for a ten minute test with a minus 30 millivolt undervolt. If you can undervolt this more, you could probably push the 10 minute test up to 32, maybe 33,000. And there's 32,253. And with the uh, the single run, you can push it probably over 36,000 if we ever get full undervolting control on this laptop. 
Um, like uh, Frost is saying, he has full undervolting control through throttle stop. I, I, my options are grayed out. I don't know why right now, but we can't, we can't take time to investigate that right now. We got to go ahead and just go into our... Uh, go into our benchmarking of games and see what kind of performance we get in a bunch of game tests. All right. So, I am going to use a little bit different... A little bit different um, we need GPU one power GPU one core clock GPU one memory usage all that's good we just we don't have GPU one temperature for some reason Oh, GPU one temperature and GPU one usage. Perfect. We found it. It's in the bottom for some reason. I have no clue why it would be in the bottom, but it's in there. Good. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and retry connection. We should be able to get steam going. Um, Sweet. Okay, so let's hop into. Let's do. For our first test. Let's do Dying Light 2 for our first test. So, Dying Light 2 is a great uh, single player game. It features DLSS, ray tracing, and frame generation. It's got, uh, I think, really good storytelling. It's like a zombie post-apocalyptic uh, story. And uh, it's, I just, I've been really enjoying playing it. I've been playing it. Um, I'm about, about two or three hours in now. It's kind of like the single player game I'm playing right now. How come I never test PUBG? That's true. I haven't tested PUBG on any of the latest laptops. I just don't think... I just don't think PUBG is uh, as popular as it used to be. I, don't, wouldn't be a, I wouldn't be opposed to trying it, though, testing it. Tomb Raider would be a good test. Yeah, we're going to do Tomb Raider. Don't worry. We've got a lot of games to test. We're going to do... Uh, my goal is to get 10 games tested today. Um, those speakers are quite loud. All right. So inside of video, we got... I'm going to turn the speakers down a little bit because <laughs> they're a little too loud. Uh, so we're going to go in here, set this to high quality ray tracing as a preset. V-Sync off 2560 by 1600. DLSS we want on quality. NVIDIA Reflex is enabled. Frame generation is enabled. We're going to save that setting. And we are also going to race out the back of the laptop. We're going to race up the back of the laptop with the handy dandy SSD that just gives a little more airflow back there. I do that with every laptop I test, so it's fair. All right. We're going to go ahead and run our benchmark. Uh, 
Uh, Frost, you're gonna have to email me any links because chat doesn't let let it happen. Uh, Cyberpunk has HDR implemented. Can you check if it works? Well, so absolutely. We were having problems with our we were having problems with our HDR um, on this laptop, so I don't think we're gonna see. Um, I don't think we're gonna see HDR working properly, unfortunately. Now. Here is the SCAR 16. I'm very curious to see if we're going to be able to... I'm very curious to see if we're going to be able to pass what the SCAR 18 did in this game. Um, Frost has got the SCAR 19, apparently. Uh, I know you mean SCAR 18. But uh, I'm very curious to see if we can pass what the SCAR 18 did. It doesn't look like we will. Uh, let me get the SCAR 18 benchmarks pulled up. For a comparison's sake. I'll do this. I'll do the uh, GT77 and SCAR15 benchmarks. In this game, Dying Light 2, the SCAR got 128. No, the SCAR got 138, and the GT77 got 128. Right now, we're doing 134. So we're on track to match performance or be very close to the SCAR 18. One thirty-seven. Right at the end, it usually goes up a little bit, so I'm anticipating we might actually beat the SCAR 18. Huh. One forty, one forty one. So we got one forty one forty eight. Um very good performance. That's three FPS higher than the SCAR eighteen. We are on the latest drivers, that's one important thing to keep in mind. Um let me show you guys this performance. So right here we have Dying Light 2 on Ultra. All of this is the same. 138 for the SCAR. We got 141 on the SCAR 16, 128 on the GT. Let's go into our next game test. Very impressive um, performance for the SCAR 16 to start with. I love to see that. Let's move into Dead Space next. Uh, can you test Valorant? I do not have Valorant t on on today. Dennis, I have tested Valorant on the, the Strix G18, and it killed it. Valorant played exceptionally well. It's very easy to run. You're going to get more than 240 FPS, I believe, on max settings. Um, so... Do 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 um so the big thing in dead space dead space is super cpu heavy and uh it's gonna try to draw a ton of wattage to the cpu and it's gonna basically it's gonna basically uh cpu bottleneck us in this game so that's the tricky part about dead space um it's really about um, how much can you not be CPU bound in dead space to push high FPS. And at the same time, maybe like how high of your GPU can you push wattage wise while also using a high amount of CPU juice. All right. So that's essentially the, I just reset our FPS counter here. So the big thing with the Ryzen CPU that we tested yesterday was that the 1% lows in Dead Space were a bit better on Ryzen. Notice our 1% lows are 33, which is not quite ideal. But uh, yeah, it, it's still very extremely smooth. Like it's not stuttering for me at all. I can't perceive any stutters. So I don't think it's an issue um, with this game, the 1% lows being 33. Absolute. Can you elaborate more on HDR issues with this laptop? So uh, how can this mode be used? So right now we need Asus to fix the HDR mode in the BIOS.
because when we enabled HDR mode, it we went to a black screen instead of, just go back to what I was doing by display testing. I, it happened during that time. Uh, basically, HDR mode blacked out the screen, caused a problem for us. So I would not, um, you, I don't think you can use HDR mode until Asus fixes it, which is kind of sad. The display still looks awesome being a mini LED, super contrasty. So it's not like the display looks bad as it is now. It's still much better than your normal laptop display. Better even than my Blade 18 display, more contrasty especially and more punchy. Um, but until the HDR mode's fixed, I wouldn't anticipate we're gonna get, you know, the, the full HDR potential of this display until it gets fixed, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, either way, still an absolutely bonkers great display though. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to do a test walking down the hallway in three, two, one. Now, in this test, um, let's see what we got on the scar. Dead space, the scar got 112. The GT77 got 130. Uh, the Blade 18 got, I think, like 118 in that range. Um, so. It'll be interesting to see what this does. It looks like we're going to get 112 on the SCAR 16 as well. Interesting. So far, we're seeing very similar performance between the SCAR 16 and the SCAR 18. I'm actually a little, it's like eerily similar performance, which I guess makes sense because it's basically the same laptop and a slightly smaller chassis. So we got 113, 34. Very, very good, but not quite... Uh, yeah, not quite as much as the GT77 in this game. All right. Next up, we have God of War. God of War is a fantastic single-player game. And uh, here is the results from... Uh, let's see. I'll do this window. Yeah, this should be able to see it right now. So you can see uh, Dead Space. We got 112 on the G uh, SCAR 18, 130 on the GT77. In God of War, we got 116, 124. All right, so the goal here is to get 116 to match what the SCAR 18 had or maybe a little bit better because we have slightly better drivers. Can you try Rainbow Six? Maybe Rainbow Six drivers have been updated, but I have not been able to test Rainbow Six yet. Uh, if we, I'll try loading it. I don't know if it'll work, though. All right, so we're going to do DLSS on quality. Graphics, we're going to be setting to all ultra. Ultra display, 2560 by 1600 quality DLSS. This is how I would play this game if I can. Hi, does HDR work on the Zephyrus Duo 16? That's a great question. I did not try enabling it. Um, good question though. Can't wait for Ragnarok on PC. Already platinumed it on P PlayStation 5. Dude, I, I beat God of War. It is an amazing game. It is such a fun game. Great storytelling. Phenomenal uh, gameplay. Um, I played it all the way through to the end. And it was just, I played, I think I beat it in about a week. I got super addicted to it. It was super fun. Okay, so uh, here we are. Let me zoom in just a little bit more on the display. Look at how good the image clarity of this laptop is. It is phenomenal. The colors are looking so good. Let me turn the brightness down just a little bit. I think that's gonna translate the colors and everything better. Reducing the exposure on the camera because I think it tends to overexpose. Um, man, this display looks awesome. All right, so here we go. Uh, Running down God of War, we're going to try to get, I believe it was, uh, was it 116 or like 112, something like that? I think it was 116 was the goal. So our goal is to beat 116. Looks like we are going to beat 116 or be close to it. Oh, we were, oh, it's getting close. So we stop when we get to the middle of the water. 117. Phenomenal. Okay, so going back to our test here. God of War, 116 for the SCAR, 124 for the GT77. Incredible performance in a 16-inch laptop uh, once again. We've got Cyberpunk 2077. Let's pop into that.
Pixel density clarity works in its favor being a 16 inch versus an 18 inch laptop. That's true. Uh, 16 inches is a phenomenal size for a nice blend of portability and a large enough display to play games really well. I think it's like the sweet spot if you need to be a very portable. Um, that said, 18 inches is a little bit better if you're not going to be moving it that much. If you're mainly going to be stationary, 18 inches, I think, is uh, going to give you a little better, a little more immersive experience. Uh, do you ever test the monitors? If Valorant can get 240 FPS on this SCAR 16, might be a good laptop to drive the 240 Hertz L OLED 27 inch. Is that a QHD OLED, Omar? Um, and uh, I haven't tested much on monitors because you can see the performance on the default display. I do sometimes test on my 4K projector and I'm gonna do a detailed comparison performance benchmark with this giant monitor here that I've got, the ultra wide. It's 52, it's 5120 by 1440p resolution, which is just insane um, brightness. Uh, and it's a thousand, it's a thousand nits too. It's really great display. All right. So we're going to set everything to ray tracing ultra frame generation on DLS on quality. All right. Let's go ahead and run this benchmark. Sixteen inch thermals just as good as eighteen inch is pretty sweet. Yeah, that's pretty sweet because you're getting the portability with the performance in the small form factor. I don't think you're gonna get the same performance from the Blade sixteen that you get with the Blade eighteen though. That's kind of like an exception. I think that that's that's kind of what makes the Scar sixteen special, um, in my opinion, because you do get the same high levels of TDP on the CPU. As the, as the SCAR 18 on, you don't get that on the Blade 16. Blade 16 has reduced thermals, at least on the CPU. Highland ERC and CL, welcome. You guys are members. Notice they have the green name, <laughs> uh, but welcome to the, welcome to the stream. Uh, do you notice much of a difference between a 240 Hertz and a 165 Hertz? Uh, I do can, I, I can tell a difference between 165 and 240. It is smoother and a little bit better. Um, in my opinion. So I just want to point out our temps and wattages. Right now we're doing 260 watts on our CPU and GPU combined there for a little while. Now it's doing 240, 260 again. Our temperatures are still fantastic. Not even above 90 on the CPU, only 74 degrees on the GPU. That's, those are better temps than we saw on the SCAR 18. Maybe this has a better thermal paste. I don't know. Um, 117. 36 for our mins. So 117. Let's see how that did against the SCAR um, 18. Let's go ahead and do here. SCAR 18. Cyberpunk. 116. So this got one FPS better than the SCAR 18. Basically matching. And five FPS better than the GT77. hey yo, That shows you the power of the... Uh, they're really nice optimization and good temperatures balance with the CPU and GPU in this SCAR 16. Uh, that said, we have seen slightly higher performance in the Cyberpunk 2077 in a couple of other uh, games. Now, while we're in Cyberpunk here, I want to go ahead and just do some quick fan noise testing for you guys. Um, so this is gonna be, we're gonna hop into the game. And we're going to switch out of manual fan mode. Right now we're in max fans. I want you guys to take a listen to max fans. Okay. All right. So we're going to start at maximum fans. This is going to be as loud as it gets. All right. Here's the fans. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll have to zoom in a little still. Just know that the mic is about 10 inches in front of the laptop. We're going to switch to silent mode. All right, switching now. That's in performance.
Much quieter. Now we're in silent mode. Notice our FPS is also going to drop. Wow, we're still pulling 120 watts to the GPU, 60 to the CPU in silent mode right now. Uh, silent mode's not perfectly quiet either. It is, I can still hear the fan spinning a little bit right now. Maybe now it's going down to silent mode. Now we're in silent mode. Okay, so now we've dropped fully into silent mode. 53 watts to the GPU, 40 to the CPU. And oh my goodness, our FPS has tanked down to 24. So if you're going to do a silent mode with Cyberpunk, you're going to need to turn the settings way down. Uh, so keep that in mind. All right, we're going to go to performance mode again. Watch our, watch our TDP on CPU and GPU boost upward again. And our FPS comes roaring back with the fans. You guys were not able to see that uh, focus. Sorry, I was changing the focus there. Oh, I'm on the wrong camera. Okay, thanks so much for letting me know. Um, well, it will, we'll, we'll be redoing it anyway. So right now we're in performance fan mode. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so we're in performance fan mode. We're doing 150 watts on the GPU, 43 watts on the CPU right now. And the fans are very bearable. They sound right about 49, 50 decibels right now in performance mode. If I were to play sounds. The music from the speakers completely drowns out the sound of the fans pretty much. And I'm not hearing any coil whine either. Here is turbo mode. There's the fans. So notice we're hitting the 170 on the GPU, 182. So full performance, basically. Going back to silent mode again. It's adjusting the power limits on the GPU down to 55 watts. It's going to be really crappy performance unless you turn the settings way down, like turn off ray tracing and other stuff, right? So... Just no silent mode is going to either need older games or really adjust the settings downward, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and hop back into Armory Crate. We're going to put, put it back to manual fan mode again. Beautiful. Okay. So there's your quick and dirty fan test, fan noise test. What's a good wattage level for your CPU? I would say in most games, you're going to want at least 50 to 60 watts on the i9. But uh, some games can use a little less, like 30, 40, and be okay. But um, in general, I think you're going to get a really good blend of performance with fan noise if you're in performance mode or maybe even turbo mode. Uh, but like If you're going to use the onboard speakers, I would use probably um, performance mode. If you're going to use the... Um, if you're going to use the, what am I trying to say? If you're going to use headphones, then I would use turbo or manual mode with max fans. Uh, so it's going to really depend on what you're doing. If you're, if you need to be quiet though, you can play in silent mode. You're just definitely going to have to turn the settings way down, um, to be able to sustain performance in silent mode. Nassis says, I want to buy a 4090 laptop, but so far the perfect one isn't out yet. I want 18 inches, an AMD CPU, 4090, great cooling, uh, undervolt with overclock, 
unlocked and a great screen. Nothing like that exists. Uh, the Alienware M18 is going to be uh, is going to have an 18 inch with AMD CPU. So that's probably the closest thing I've seen so far to what you're looking for. But there's no mini LED options, and the display options on that are kind of um, not top tier, I guess is what I would say. All right, so we're going to need to enable net graph three. We're going to go to our video. We're going to set to full screen mode. It's automatically detected that we're in high graphical settings. We just leave the defaults. And we pop into our, our, our uh, workshop benchmark. Uh, Michael, if you need high single core performance, you want you want a recommendation between AMD and Intel. Intel has the higher single core performance for sure. All right, so here we are, CS:GO. Let's see what we get. The number to beat for the scar is going to be 512. Uh, will you be testing the Strix 17 with AMD chip? That is the goal. I do have an order in on one of those. It's been delayed though, um, so I'm not sure when I'm going to get that. Right now we're doing 600 something FPS. 600, 700 something, 500, looking pretty good. AMD doesn't undervolt no C like Intel. Uh, Anthony, I did, uh, I did underclock, I'm uh, sorry, I did undervolt the Ryzen chip in yesterday's live stream and we saw a noticeable bump in performance. It went up by like, uh, like Cinebench went from 34,000 to 36,000 something. So like a seven or eight percent bump in performance with undervolting on Ryzen. Pretty dang impressive. Newegg says the Scar 17 is delayed until April. Oh, that sucks. Will you be doing an overview comparison of all 13th gen laptops once you've done all? Um, I will definitely be doing like top five or top 10 laptops within each of the price segments as after I do some more testing. So my goal is to be able to do lots and lots of testing and then we'll be able to uh, you know, do roundups or um, detailed comparisons, you know, between lots of them. Okay, so we got 520 FPS, which is uh, eight more than you can see right here on CSGO. We got 513 on the SCAR, so uh, I guess that's seven more than the SCAR 16, but the GT77 got 548. Okay. So very good performance. Obviously, you're going to get more than 240 FPS in CSGO, but it's nice to see the performance levels. Let's run Hogwarts Legacy. Unfortunately, we don't have a Microsoft Flight Simulator to test today because uh, I started test. I started downloading and installing it this morning at like 9.30, 10 o'clock. And I let it start installing and it literally did not finish installing by three o'clock. It was like five hours and I think it was only 70% done. So what did we get on Cinebench? Uh, so Highland, if you haven't checked it out, I did a comparison benchmark between the Ryzen and the SCAR 16. We got over 32,000 in single core runs or single runs, um, in a seg in a, like a sequence. And then for our 10 minute test, we got 30.7 K like 30,700 for a 10 minute. But, uh, if we could undervolt this baby more, we definitely get more. So... How is SCAR 16 have better performance than the 18? Uh, Dennis, the SCAR 16 and 18 share the similar CPU and GPU. And basically it comes down to Silicon Lottery. So they both can go to the same exact power limits. They have the same memory. They have the same, basically everything about them except the display on the SCAR 16 is uh, noticeably better. The SCAR 16 display is better though it is smaller. 
The keyboard on the Scar 18 is also has a number pad. Um, neither of them have Windows Hello. They both have the same RGB lighting setup. They have the same RAM speeds, uh, the same GPU and CPU power limits exactly. And similar fan thermal design, similar CPU uh, liquid metal conductonaut paste. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why we're going to have um, really just very similar performance between between the uh, the SCAR 18 and SCAR 16. All right, so here we are in Hogwarts. Hogwarts is an extremely demanding CPU and GPU uh, game. And it is also, I believe, memory sensitive as well. So in this test, uh, you got to keep in mind for the Hogwarts test for both the GT77 and the SCAR 18, the Hogwarts game has gone through quite a bit of updates and optimization since we tested the SCAR 18 about a month ago. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison anymore between this and the SCAR 18. So I wouldn't really recommend doing too direct of a comparison here. I'll still show you the numbers for the SCAR 18, just know the context of the game having, having been updated, okay? And we're also on newer drivers. Okay, so here we are, we're gonna run through Hogsmeade, which is the most demanding area of Hogwarts. We are doing uh, 80 to 100 watts on the CPU, 155, 156 to the GPU. Pretty phenomenal TDP throughputs. Our actual FPS uh, is good, though our 1% are a bit low. So we got 98 FPS for our average, 26 for our 1% lows. Um, yeah. It's a really demanding game. It's, it's basically as demanding as Dead Space, very close to it. And so this is a very strong test of your CPU throughput and your memory optimization. Um, I wanna point out that we got better performance on the Blade 18 with faster memory than we did on this, okay? So uh, hopping over to our secondary uh, test here, you can see in Hogwarts, we got 93 on the SCAR. 18 and only 78 on the GT77. So uh, 98 is five better than the SCAR 18, but I would expect similar performance on the SCAR 18. Okay, so very interesting that we got 98. This is obviously gonna play extremely well. This is all on maximum ultra settings. A little bit of stuttering, but I've seen stuttering on every single PC I've played on this. Um, the Ryzen CPU had slightly less stuttering, but there was still stuttering on the Zephyrus Duo 16. Our 1% lows, or at least were, were better, though. Um, okay. What is the name of the software you're using to display the CPU and GPU status? It's Afterburner with Riva Tuner. Let's see if we can get Red Dead Redemption to play. I don't know that we will. I'm not even going to try. Uh, let's just get into let's get into Shadow of the Tomb Raider first. I don't think we'll have time to do Red Dead. Are you highest ray tracing on Ultra? QHD DLSS on quality exclusive full screen. All that looks good. Hilarious that twenty four ninety nine is bang for the buck in twenty twenty three. Well, there's always bang for the buck, even at like it's bang for the buck doesn't necessarily mean it's a budget system. Bang for the buck means it's competitively like high performance per dollar, um, like as a general category of product, you know. So it's not quite. It's it's. I know sometimes people say be best bang for the buck laptop, meaning like, oh, like an $800, like really cheap bow, like cheap thing. But I, I view bang for the buck as a term meaning good performance per dollar. And uh, we're definitely getting better performance per dollar in the SCAR 16 than we're getting on like the GT77, right? The GT77 is very expensive performance per dollar. Here we are in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Look at those colors. Uh, very vibrant, very colorful display. Honestly, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's a very gorgeous display. What's up, Bit? 
Welcome to the live stream. Uh, Luffy says, Ah, oh, damn, just came in. Anyone in the comments could let me know if the Scar 16 performs well compared to the other laptops. So, Luffy, so far we've seen it matching performance with the Scar 18. Uh, slightly underperforming against the Omen and Blade 18, uh, at least in most of the titles, but still putting up excellent all-around performance. The display was like 800 and... Uh, what was it? It was 826 nits, I think, on the display. Um... We're getting very similar TDP and throughput on our CPU and GPU uh, compared to the SCAR 18, though, which is interesting because we're in a 16-inch form factor doing the same performance as an 18-inch. I love it. Omar asks, is HDR running now? No, we have HDR disabled uh, in Windows, so I don't believe we can enable it right now because of the bu a bugged BIOS needs to be fixed from ASUS. The display still looks phenomenal because it's mini LED though. Even without HDR, the blacks are extremely black um, and the screen is super contrasty. Um, so, and there's no backlight bleed at all with this laptop. I wish you streamed on Twitch as well. I would be giving you my Twitch primes. Oh, gotcha. Um, 1100 nits is in HDR mode, yeah, but even in non-HDR mode, we, can, we were seeing uh, super high bright. We were seeing super high bright. Um, like it was, it's in non-HDR mode, it's supposed to be 600 nits, but we tested it at 826 nits using the Spider 5 Elite. So I don't know exactly what's going on there. And uh, the Zephyrus Duo 16 did score 1,018 nits, and it's supposed to be the same mini led display as far as i know maybe it's actually a different panel though i don't know or maybe the zephyrus duo powers the display differently so it can go to a slightly higher brightness level or something i don't know how is hdr disabled uh so hdr in windows is unchecked because when we checked it it blacked out the screen we couldn't see anything so apparently it's like bugged in the bios chris ramos says hey brandon how's the speakers on this versus the scar 18 uh, so the speakers sounded exactly the same as the SCAR-18, basically. Um, and the Blade eight, uh, Blade 16 was slightly better, I would say. Blade 16 is slightly better, and the Blade 18 is even better than the Blade 16. How many SS slots do you have on the SCAR-16? You have two M.2s, and they should fit double-sided. At least one of them should fit double-sided. I'm not sure about the one where the... The SSD is underneath. All right, so Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we got 156, slightly higher than the SCAR 18. Popping over to the SCAR 18, you can see Shadow of the Tomb Raider got 151. So we got five more than the SCAR 18. Again, Silicon Lottery, um, driver updates might have slightly changed performance. I would anticipate uh, SCAR 18 to be getting very similar levels of performance in general to this depending on your laptop and the silicon lottery so uh and that's very it's like only a few few percentage points off and depending on how you run it you might run into that levels of performance anyway like if you were to run the test several times you're probably going to get some variance in fps averages right so it's within within variance range Will enabling HDR make a difference in performance? No, it shouldn't be any difference in performance. It's just little, it should just, in theory, make the peakiness of the whites be slightly brighter peaky and uh, the darks slightly darker, but I don't, know how, I don't know if that really is true or not, how much of a difference it would make, because it's already so peaky and so dark already out of the box because of the mini LED. Um, this is an i9-13980HX processor in this laptop. Leo says, I just got my SCAR 18 and it's awesome. Yeah, it's a really sweet laptop. Open myself up to Twitch simps. Oh my goodness. I don't know if I can handle the simpiness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Alpha M03 says, I just saw your comment. Love your channel, watched almost all of your latest videos, and ended up with my top three, which I'm considering, the Legion Pro 7i, Omen 2023, and Strix G18. 
Which one would I choose between those three? Hmm. Great question. Um, if you're going for best bang for the buck, I would go with the Omen. I think it's slightly better value than the Legion. Um, if you want the best display between those three, the Strix G18 has the better display. I think the Omen also has the best ports between those three. The Legion Pro 7i is going to be the most portable because it's only a 16-inch laptop, though. Um, so it all really depends. Between those three, I'd probably go Omen. But I think you can't really go wrong necessarily with any of those three because all three have their pros. They all three have um, really good things about them. So it looks like Rainbow Six Siege might still be bugged. Goodness. Let's get into The Witcher 3. Um... Do, do, do. What's your thinking around the ROG flow with the 4090 external GPU? Would it come anywhere close in terms of performance to the SCAR 16? Uh, so it would get close, especially in GPU bound games. The, the flow series should be like at least, I don't know, 80 to 90% the performance of what we're seeing. Um, but the simple fact is the, the bandwidth going through the eGPU enclosures, um, I believe it's a Thunderbolt 4 connection or like a USB 4 connection basically, PCI, I think it's actually a PCIe Express uh, connection, which is actually even better than Thunderbolt 4. That said, uh, it's still going to bottleneck you a little bit, especially in CPU-bound games. That's where you're going to see the biggest degradation in performance. Um, and yeah, you should still be able to get exceptionally good performance with the Flow X16, though. It's not like you're gonna, like, getting terrible performance or something. Um, your 1% lows might stutter a little bit more, though, because you're using an external GPU. Need to do actual testing with this generation. All right, so here we are. We're on DLSS is on quality. Ray tracing is on ultra. Everything's on ultra right now. We have frame generation enabled. We're at 2560 by 1600 standard settings. Let's hop into our benchmark zone for The Witcher 3. If you were buying a desktop, what would you go for? Uh, dude, that's all comes down to budget and pricing. And I wouldn't say I'm an expert on desktops as much. So uh, I personally went for a 4090 desktop. But now that I have a 4090 laptop, I'm like, did I even really need a 4090 desktop? Probably not. Because this thing, these things are so dang powerful. Um, like the Blade 18 can easily power that display behind me. And I'm like, I probably don't even need a desktop. So I don't know. I gotta say this hasn't been st as stuttery as it usually is. Like the Witcher is usually terribly stuttery, but it's actually surprisingly good right now. All right, so The Witcher 3 is a very good benchmarking game today because it does have frame generation, ray tracing, and DLSS. So it lets us test with those features on and off. So we're testing with everything on max with all of those bells and whistles turned on, which is how I think people will be playing the game. And I have done a number of tests with and without this uh, being enabled in the SCAR 18 testing. So here we are. We're going to run through our benchmark area and see what we get with The Witcher 3. I just use an external display uh, for anything useful. I have the SCAR 18. It is recommended to activate the core isolation on Windows 11. Uh, if you're wanting to do undervolting uh, with Intel XTU, if that ever becomes available, you'll have to disable uh, core isolation. I wonder if we have to disable that for throttle stop. Frost, do you know if you've disabled core isolation? Okay, uh, 111, 55. I believe that's good. Let's see what we got. Did we get this? Did we test this? 
I know I tested this in the Scar 18. Let me try to pull up the number though. So popping over to my channel, we can check out our benchmark history by going down to our Scar 18 benchmarks video. There we go. Frame gen. And let's go to the Witcher 3 cap. Uh, frame gen on. We're enjoying it. Um, Clark says, although building a desktop gaming. All right. Yeah, so I had it enabled. Here we are. Looks like we're going to get 106. So we got five more FPS on the SCAR 16. Again, it could be related to drivers. It could be related to a lot of different things, but it's still very good performance for the SCAR 16. Uh, it could also be Silicon Lottery, right? Uh, let's see here. Apex Legends time, and we also need to do Time Spy still on the SCAR 16. Yes, you did, Frost. Okay, so maybe I should try disabling core isolation and seeing if we can use throttle stop then. What resolution is this running at? Uh, 2560 by 1600. I don't, I don't have core isolation disabled right now, Frost. So that could be the reason. Oh, yeah. We need to go in here and we need to put plus FPS max 300. Here we go. Worth to buy someone SCAR 16 this time? Uh, I think the SCAR 16 is a phenomenal laptop. If it fits your ports requirements, and you love RGB laptops, um, and you don't mind plastic on your laptop, I think it's a really great laptop. Did you disable anything else, Frost, like uh, virtual machine platform or anything else? All right, so we're gonna test on high settings first. We're gonna go into the firing range and then we're gonna do low settings and then we're gonna pop into a match. Whee! Okay, so I need to change a couple settings. All right, so here we are. We're on high settings. Let's go ahead and see what we get. I think I need to be on, okay. I'm tuning up the system here. All right, so uh, making sure this, that my, my sensitivity settings are correct. If you're aiming like this, you really need them to be correct. Um, so this is very responsive, gorgeous display action. Let me turn the sound on. Extremely responsive with no ghosting to the best of my knowledge right now. This is gonna be an amazing laptop to play a game like Apex Legends. Especially since Apex Legends has so much gorgeous color and uh, all of that, you know, so pretty freaking awesome. Let's go ahead and change our settings down to low now. All right, so everything's low except we have uh, TSAA and our textures are up. We should be able to get close to 300 FPS, if not 300 nonstop. 
And I can tell there's been a slight increase to the responsiveness now. Definitely. It feels nice and tight, very fluid. I think my aim is, I'm just like, I haven't played Apex in like a little while. My aim is feeling a little rusty right now. So this is really helpful, getting my aim practice in. Our CPU temps are kind of spicy right now. Doing 90 degrees. That said, uh, if you wanted to, you could limit the FPS down to 240 and that would help reduce your temperatures on the, this laptop. Very nice, okay. With this money, if you have more in your home, you take a very good monitor. Yeah, you could take it, you could get another monitor uh, and use that with this display. No way you can feel a difference from 200 to 299. Yeah, I can. I definitely can tell. It's a, it's a smoothness increase. Um, I can definitely tell. I can I could I could predict 144 to 240 increase. 144 to 165 is harder because it's a smaller difference. But like when you go from like 200 to 300 FPS, like the fluidity of the image on the display is noticeable with your eyes. Uh, and if you were recording in slow motion, you'd be able to see how it's updating faster. Um, I think the human eye can see like I could, I think you could see up to 480, but I don't think all players are gonna be able to tell that difference though. The human eye can't see past 69 FPS. That's just not true. The biggest thing is how fast it updates back to your image. Like, like I guarantee you, like if I were to play at 69 FPS on a 69 Hertz refresh rate display, and then I were to switch to say like, I don't know, a 360 or 480 or even 240 Hertz display. It's such a massive difference for aiming and like screen tearing and how much ghosting you get. Uh, oh, it's massive. I can, I can see a huge difference. It's not that I can't play at 60. I played at 60 for a long time for when I was younger. But man, it is it is a huge difference. I just polished my grapple. 420 hertz is the sweet spot. <laughs> uh, most important is very is a very good monitor with better colors. So that's just going to depend on who you are and what you prioritize. If you're if you are uh, more of a casual gamer, I would agree. Better colors, better contrast, better nits brightness. That's gonna give you a better overall experience than high refresh rate. So like a 4K 144 Hertz display would be the way to go, in my opinion. If, but if you're doing, um, let's see here, let's do, uh, I guess we'll go Scout. Uh, but if you're doing so, if you're doing casual games, going with a display like the GT77, 144 hertz is going to be amazing. All right, we're going to reset our FPS counter. But if you're going to do competitive games, I really recommend doing a 240 hertz display. Um, the biggest thing on the Titan is just that the the general response rate is not as high. So, like the grade to grade response time is is noticeably worse than uh, a laptop like this. Who is he shooting at? Dang it, we're not gonna get this kill. 
Oh, no. I missed. See, if I had 480 hertz refresh rate, I would have got to kill. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh... I'm gonna turn the sound up, see if I can hear some spatial audio. We got that kill. Ah, we killed ourselves with our own arc star. Woo. That's funny. Okay, uh, so very nice. Getting extremely high FPS. Um Next up, we have Time Spy, and then we're gonna do a summary of everything we've found out about this laptop, all right? Uh, in a couple of generations, run for FPS will stop at performance, will reach the level that it won't make sense, everyone will concentrate really on color and vision. Um, we kind of are at that point already, and you know, we look at the, the displays these days are just focused on higher color gamuts and brightness in the, you know? Uh, and they're stopping at 240 hertz because above 240, I do think there's significantly diminishing returns um, for competitive gaming. All right, so here we are. We're going to do, uh, let's do Port Royale actually first because uh, I'd like to import Royale. OLED has weird RGB subpixel structure, ugly text, and fringing. Interesting. Um,. Yeah, like, like think about like just a few years ago, we were like pushing 144 hertz displays and then 240 hertz was like, oh my gosh, this is the best. And now we got 360 and 480 F, uh, hertz refresh rate displays. And now we're like, like, I think the sweet spot in a couple of years from now would probably be like a 480 hertz QHD display. That's what I think will be the sweet spot. And that's probably where we're going to stop. I don't think we're going to go higher than that. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But I'm, I'm anticipating that, like, a few years from now, I would love to see 1,000 nits brightness, 480 hertz refresh rate, QHD display. And I want to see 4K, one, uh, 4K 240 hertz is what I want to see, too. That should be even better, too. Alpha asks, I hear a lot of people saying 16 gigs isn't big enough now. Does 32 gigs really help with gaming over 16? Thanks. So, Alpha, that's a great question. Um, in games like Hogwarts, Star Citizen, uh, those games really want more than 16. We use 22 to 25 gigs in Hogwarts all the time um, of RAM. That said, 16 gigs still runs pretty smoothly for the most part. Um, maybe a little bit worse stuttering here and there. Basically, if you're running 16 gigs in those kinds of games, your 1% lows are likely going to suffer a little bit. Um, and certain games, they may suffer a lot, but we'll see. And I think for future proofing, I really think 32 gigs is going to be a lot safer a number to reach. If you can reach for 32 gigs, that'll be a lot better, A+. Plus, okay? Meanwhile, stupid, uh, stupid NVIDIA is trying to make 8K happen. There's no point in really going to 8K, even on movie maybe maybe on a movie theater screen you could see 8k difference between 4k and 8k but honestly even 6k would be enough right i think 6k would be good uh good enough to where you're hitting retinal like you're the human eye can't see any more detail probably at 6k so um yeah it's a bit awkward all right, we're going to try uh, overclocking as well. So we're going to do our time spy stock, and then we're going to do a quick and dirty overclock and see what we can get pushing the GPU to a little higher limit. I have 64 gigs, crucial 5200 kit on mine. Uh, Frost, are you actually getting 5200? Uh, has Asus unlocked that to allow you to get to 5200? Because I thought you were going to still be locked down to 4800.
Yeah, Frost says it's 4,800 still. Gotcha. Yep. CPU power only at 30 watts. Then G when is GPU at? Uh, so CPU is only at 30, 40 watts in this because it's not a CPU demanding area or test. So that's the reason why. This is just a GPU test. Port Royale tests your ray tracing performance primarily. 13,560. It's a very good score, but we were seeing over 14,000 on the GT77 for reference. All right, so we're in manual mode. Let's see what we get. <laughs> so this is um we're gonna be in manual with a 50 100 50 slash 100 oc on the gpu and we're gonna try an oc of probably like 225 1000 or maybe 200 1000 we'll see I have not tried overclocking this GPU at all, so probably 225 would be stable. Maybe a 200 almost for sure will be, but 225 might not be. We'll see. All right, so looking at our performance so far we're doing 172 watts our gpu clock right now is 20 70 20 85 it's very good but we're seeing higher gpu clocks on like the gt77 out of the box was doing like 2200 uh with the factory oc that it has and uh dropping down to 199 right now our temperatures are very good but they are a little bit higher than we've seen on some of the other laptops um, but they're still pretty good. They're pretty dang good. You guys are talking about memory speeds. Yeah, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what the fastest RAM for a laptop is going to be. I don't know. Uh, and it's like I know XMG is trying to push for 6,400 on some of their laptops. I'm curious to see how much that's going to make a difference. Uh, I'm curious about the latency and the timings. And then it's obviously very fast RAM for clock speed. So you got to combine all of those together to get our overall RAM speed. So we'll have to see. I think XMG is going to do really killer performance. My goal is to start prepping the XMG Neo 17 that came in yesterday, tonight. And I'm going to try to do the XMG Neo live stream tomorrow. I think it's only 5,600 RAM included with the laptop, though. Is, is 6,400 CL43 or 8,000? 38 CL better? I'm not sure which one's better, vitamin K. We have to actually test it. Um, Scar 18 versus GT77 versus M18 versus Blade 18, all 4090. What is the best considering performance, longevity, and thermals? Uh, just looking at performance, longevity, and thermals, I'm thinking the GT77 would be the best out of those, those options, at least in terms of most performance. But if you're looking at like a blend of more premium features, then I would lean towards the Blade 18. We, don't, we haven't tested the Alienware M18 yet, and that has had very little testing so far. So we don't really know, not, know enough about the Alienware M18 to judge that one yet. Um, so, but between the other three, the GT77 is going to be the best overall, overall round performance between those three. All right, so out of the box, we've got 21,564, 16,000. 396 with a 30 millivolt undervolt. It's very good. Let's go ahead and do our quick and dirty OC. So let me make this a little bit bigger. 
so you can see it a little better. All right, we're going to do a Oh, well, let's do 220. I'm feeling lucky at 220. And we'll do 1,000 on the memory. Let's just find out if it works. If we get unstable, we'll uh, lower it. But it'll probably be stable. Vitamin K, uh, Steve, wait, change the DR5 and come out, better frames for laptops. I mean, you guys are just chatting up a storm. Woot 1000. Just max it out. Dude, you can't. You can't. I mean, that is pretty much maxing it out from based on all the tests I did on the SCAR 18, on the overclocking I did with the SCAR 18. The Alienware X16 put LP DDR5 6000. Interesting. That would be interesting to see the performance in that. I don't know how. I don't know what the latency is going to be on that, you know. So that's going to be interesting. All right, so, so far, I'm not seeing any graphical glitches. This is a good sign. Notice our clock speed doing 2175 now. So we're not even utilizing the full 220 OC that I put into Afterburner. We're running into voltage. Um, basically, like the voltage curve is maxing out at a certain point, and we're not being able to go beyond it. So 2100 for our clock speed. If you were wanting to bypass this, basically you'd have to replace the V BIOS or modify the driver somehow. Plus 1,000 gigahertz GPU clock OC. Goodness, that would just... Good luck with that. <laughs> you would just die instantly. So uh, once we are done with this test, we're going to do a summary of everything we found out about the SCAR-16. Um, I'm going to talk about every aspect of the laptop, give my thoughts on it as a whole. I'm going to try to cover everything. V, v core is temp uh, correlated, so maybe put it on ice. LOL, what? <laughs> put, throw it in the freezer. That would be pretty funny. I mean, our temps are only 70 degrees, so I mean, I don't think it's going to go beyond that anyway. Am I going to try the core isolation? I suppose we could try that. Just see if it unlocks. See if it unlocks throttle stop. I think that's worth at least doing a restart to see. And if it does unlock it, I'll try just doing a quick and dirty undervolt, see if we get any performance gains. Jay's two cents taped an air conditioner to the 4090. That's nice. <laughs> Omar says, uh, installing the MSI app lets you undervolt OC on my Asus laptop GPU. Is there any reason why Asus doesn't give us software to do this? Is there any harm using MSI software or is it safe? Uh, it's just undervolting the GPU doesn't really give you additional performance. Usually it mainly just lets you potentially regulate your temperatures down a little bit. Okay, our OC gave us 22,171 for our time spy, which is uh, a nice bump of what was that? 650 points or 800, 700 points or something like that. I like that. Let's go ahead and disable core. We're going to disable core isolation. And we're going to go to Windows, Features, and we turn off. Disable Virtual Machine Platform. And we're going to go ahead and restart. And we're going to see if throttle stop works after disabling those two features. 
I don't know if it will. I don't think it will. But might as well find out. Have you ever considered cooling a desktop PC with a home radiator system? A what? <laughs> Goodness. Like a $5,000 home air conditioner? I think that's what you're saying. <laughs> uh, what do you mean when you're saying unlock throttle stop? So earlier in the live stream, we were trying to... Uh, we were trying to undervolt using throttle stop and we were not able to, it was grayed out. The options were grayed out. So the goal of, the goal of removing core isolation and we're just gonna see basically if throttle stop now has uh, everything ungrayed. Yeah, it's still grayed out. So, Core isolation was not related. It's something related to the BIOS. Yeah. yeah everything is everything's locked down in throttle stop. Okay. So glad I'm glad I confirmed that. But um but yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and rotate the camera around. And we're gonna get our overview of what I think about the SCAR 16, okay? So, Uh, King Dragon says the fact that AMD can match Intel in performance, even though it consumes 50 watts less, is insane. Um, that's not true, King Dragon. In multi-core, we were doing 130 watts on the Ryzen, and we were doing 140 watts on the Intel. I'm not sure. Maybe you're talking about in certain games, maybe that are. You, you, when you're looking at the game optimization, you really need to be looking at like turbo mode versus turbo mode, because the way that the manual modes were running changed during during the recent BIOS update. So anyway, uh, it's it's tricky to do those kinds of raw comparisons. All right, so let me turn the brightness of this guy down a little bit so it doesn't blow out the screen, the camera as much. <laughs> it's insanely bright. All right, sweet. Okay, here we go. All right. So this is the Asus Strix SCAR16. It features a 1100 nits brightness, HDR, mini LED, QHD 240 hz display. It's got an i9-13980HX in it, which is an excellent performance, giving almost as much multi-core performance as an i9-13900K. Um, that said, this thing, I could not undervolt it. Other users say have been able to undervolt it using throttle stop. I don't know why this one's not letting me. Uh, the undervolting software inside the BIOS, undervolting, if you don't know what it is, is a way to increase the efficiency of your processor or your, whatever silicon you're using because manufacturers typically overvolt to ensure stability where some CPU or GPU components can undervolt and increase power efficiency. Um, that said, we did test today at the 30 millivolt undervolt in everything that we tested and the performance was very good matching the SCAR 18. Now, uh, matching or beating the SCAR-18 in every test that we ran. Um, the keyboard on this is very nice. We've got uh, a nice layout to it with nice extra functionalities. I went over the keyboard earlier. It's got a good feel to the keyboard with decent key travel, but I would say that the this is not quite as nice as something like the mechanical keyboard you get on the GT77. It's not as nice as the mechanical keyboard on the Omen 17. Um, but I do like the layout and the functionality. The touchpad is excellent. And for a 16 inch laptop, you can turn on this number pad functionality. And that's pretty sweet. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. I don't think the camera's gonna focus on that. Uh, but the, the touchpad functionality is really nice um, if you're gonna use an external mouse, right? I wouldn't really turn it on and off that often. And it's pretty quick and easy to turn on and off, but 
it's hard for me to think about it. I usually end up using just the numbers up here at the top. But uh, maybe if you can program yourself to think that way, it would be fine. Style-wise, this is probably the most RGB-ified laptop that you can buy on the market. It's very uh, gorgeous. We've, I did some lights off examples earlier in the live stream. You can see the lights on the front. You can see the lights on the back. You got a light up RGB logo. You can turn all of these lights off for a more professional look if you need to. Um, it's a very stylish, probably the most stylish RGB-ified laptop that money can buy. Now, in terms of performance per pound, this is phenomenal. At only five and a half pounds, we're seeing the same performance that we saw in the SCAR 18, but in a 16 inch form factor. That's, that's phenomenal. Now, um, the only other real contender for performance per pound would probably be like the Legion Pro 7 or maybe the XMG Neo 16. Those are gonna be very competitive, especially if you have the liquid cooler on the Neo 16. But this is gonna be one of the very best performance because it's a full watt i9, full wattage, RTX 4090 in this one, but you can get this with a 4080 for a discounted price. Now I did a detailed comparison earlier in the live stream near the beginning uh, of uh, all the different competition out there for the, the SCAR 16. You got the Blade 16, you got uh, the Legion Pro 7, you got the, uh, the there's a, quite a few of them. And you go back to the beginning of the live stream if you wanna go, I mean, you know, if you want to have me go through all of them. But the biggest advantage to this laptop compared to most other laptops out there is the mini LED display. And it is kind of the star of the show. It's super bright and very high levels of contrast. And uh, that, that's kind of the big thing. Like the blacks are super black, the darks are really dark, but we did run into problems with the HDR mode um, when we tried activating it during the display test. You can check that out. I believe a BIOS update is gonna fix that problem. Um, Overall, the display is gorgeous, the keyboard works well, the touchpad works well. Uh, this area of the keyboard, uh, wrist rest, does not get that hot when you're gaming, so it's extremely comfortable to game for long periods of time. I love that. Now, in terms of premium features, we are missing some premium features. We do not have Windows Hello. This is a plastic overall chassis, right? It's not gonna be as premium as what some of the, like the Razer Blade 16 is, right? It's not gonna be as premium as like the Alienware M16, because both of those have Windows Hello, both of those have metal chassis. The Aura 17X, also a metal chassis. There's a few different metal chassis that are gonna be just a more premium, nicer experience all around, I think, than this one. Um, overall, I love this laptop. I can highly recommend this laptop. It's not quite the perfect laptop, but it's a great all-arounder and it's priced very competitively and it's a very compelling all-around package for the money. Um, for as far as improvements go, I wanna see a better webcam next year. I wanna see Windows Hello on this guy. Um, I want to see, uh, the speakers on this are pretty good. Uh, they could get a little better still. And so I would love to see a little better speakers. I would love to see a mechanical keyboard on this guy again. And other than that, I mean, it's hard to complain about anything else. The temperatures on this were surprisingly good in most titles, given the fact that it's a full power TDP unit in a 16 inch chassis. The fact that it can compete with 18 inch laptops at all is phenomenal. Um, okay. Um, I think that's my wrap up for the most part. Like if, if you're looking for a gaming laptop that's gonna be lighter weight, that's gonna have cool RGB, and it's gonna be very functional. There's there's only a few things to complain about with the SCAR 16, and I think so many people are gonna be super happy with the performance they get, and the display, and the keyboard, and the mouse, everything. It's just a great all-around package. I can definitely highly recommend it. Let me go ahead and uh, look over chat and see if we have any questions. Let's see. All right, Vitamin K says, Scar 16, gotta love it, uh, or he says, love it. I had minus 100 on the 3800, R23 on Intel. Can you undervolt the AMD by minus 100? Will it become unstable? The most you can undervolt the AMD uh, on my, mine was minus 30. It became extremely unstable at minus 30, basically instantly crashing. Um, 
Your PC Prime says, I think this is the best 16 inch laptop. It's certainly up there. It's There are pros and cons, and I could see why someone would pick this one over the competition, because I think it has the best display sweet spot. The QHD 240 Hertz, great all around color gamut, great contrast, great brightness. It's just, it's the display that does everything. It's the best all around display in the 16 inch category, I think. The Blade 16 display is only 120 Hertz at 4K. That's the problem. If it was 240 Hertz, I wish I wish the Blade 16 QHD 240 Hertz was a mini LED. Then, then we would have some good competition for this laptop, but it, that, there's no option like that right now on Razer's um, laptops. So that basically makes the Scar 16 kind of unique being the only laptop really that has this display, this setup, um, aside from other Asus laptops. Like we have the Zephyrus M16 and the Zephyrus Duo 16 that both have the similar um, mini LED 16 inch QHD display. So those laptops are arguably the best alternatives to this display, but this is, if you want the Intel spec config with an R, uh, RTX 4090 full TDPs, this is the only option in the Intel spec lineup. So, um, cause the Zephyrus M16 is a lot lower and the, the Flow X16 is also a lot lower TDP. Um, King Dragon says, I think the Duo 16 is thinner than the Scar 16. Am I right? Um, let's pull out the Duo 16 real quick. I can show you. Uh, it's Well, we're wrapped up. Whatever, we'll take the wrap off. So it's very similar. I would say that, so the biggest difference with this Duo 16 and the Scar 16 is gonna be, uh, I think the Duo 16 is a bit more premium because uh, it's got the the all metal chassis. So that's probably the area where it's a bit more premium, but I just can't do the Duo 16 because of the keyboard placement personally. Um, in terms of thickness, I think it's looks the same. It looks so dang similar in terms of thickness. I can't tell a difference. Maybe a little bit thinner in the front. I think the back is about the same though. Maybe just a hair thinner in the back too. I don't know. It's they're so similar, it's impossible to tell, at least at eye glance. It's very, very close. Um, okay, so uh, Duo 16 has a raised, is raised at the back. Yeah, but so is the Scar 16, so they're both kind of that way. Um, yeah, I think the Duo 16 might just be a hair thinner, but it's very, very close. Uh, what's the next stream? So we've got the XMG Neo 17 with the water cooler. I'm gonna try to get that set up tonight and get all the drivers and everything updated on it. Um, so I can do a live stream with that tomorrow if possible. So that would be, I think the next one. I also have a Steam Deck 599 versus gaming laptop that's 599 comparison stream coming up too. So I, uh, that one's, I might do that one instead tomorrow, we'll see. I also, I also might have to take a break from streaming for a day or two because I've got some comparison videos I need to film and edit down. So we'll have to see. But uh, I would expect there should be new videos tomorrow or a live stream tomorrow, one of the two. But it's kind of up in the air. I'm not sure exactly what's going to be tomorrow, but it's going to be something fun and it's going to be something great. So um, either way, thank you guys so much uh, for stopping by. Uh, Steve O'Nash says, do a laptop drop test. I have done one in the past. Uh, I did a Blade 14 drop test. Um, I might actually do a Steam Deck drop test uh, sometime here in the future because that, that thing's a portable device and I got one. So might as well after benchmarking and testing and maybe drop it, see how durable it is. Uh, and I might, do a, I might do a laptop drop test. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Anyway, um, King Dragon says, thank you, Gizmo, you're great. Uh, I, I actually, I'm not opposed to doing some because it's kind of interesting to see how durable they actually are. They're kind of fragile, I think, still because they're big kind of gangly devices. If you hit them at the wrong angle on like cement, they're done, you know? So maybe I should do a tough gaming laptop. That would make sense. Um, trying to think of anything else for today. I think that's it for the live stream for today. Thank you guys so much. Um, and big shout out to the channel. The channel uh, kind of blew my mind. 
The let me go just do a check here. So the channel right now is at you can't see. I gotta switch cameras if we're gonna show you this. Um, the channel is at one hundred and eighty-five thousand real-time views, which is the highest it's ever been at. So thank you guys so much for all your support and all the new subscribers and all the super chats and all the people that became members recently. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, Cause basically this, if, if I can keep this level of viewership up, I can definitely keep doing this for a living, which is so nice. So woohoo. Yeah. Super awesome. All right. I'll see you guys in the next live stream or a review video, whatever drops tomorrow. But there should be something for you guys to watch tomorrow either way. Peace.